And welcome to Nashville, Tennessee, where it's not just the season opener, but it's also the SEC opener for the Vanderbilt Commodores and the championship-hungry Georgia Bulldogs. Here at Vandy, they've got the Star Walk to bring them across the street and into the stadium, and the doors have their own star. Tailback Keyshawn Vaughn ran wild in their bowl game. Can he continue that trend today? Meanwhile, you know Georgia's star, Jake Fromm. The only thing we don't know, can the Georgia native lead the Bulldogs to their first national title since 1980? Welcome to ESPN College Football Primetime, presented by Hampton by Hilton. For the first time in a quarter century, Georgia opening their season on the road against a conference opponent, the third-ranked Bulldogs matching up with Vanderbilt. It's a series that dates to 93, 1893. Tom Hart alongside Jordan Rodgers. We've seen all the national title contenders already, right? Clemson already took care of business. Alabama and Ohio State. What do we need to know about this national title contender? Well, you need to know that Kirby Smart is building a giant here, just like Nick Saban, just like Dabo Sweeney. He's recruited better, if not as good as anybody in the country. And what you're going to see, the best offensive line and biggest offensive line in the entire country, a quarterback that somehow I feel like is still slightly overlooked, and he's one of the best in the entire country. And, oh, yeah, their running back, he's already in the Heisman conversation. He'll continue to build his resume tonight and moving forward. Well, they've been close. They've been really close. Over the last couple of seasons, Georgia has been on the brink. 2017 was sensational. The coming out party for Kirby Smart and his dogs. They won the SEC, a thriller in the Rose Bowl against Oklahoma, but let a fourth-quarter lead slip away against Bama in the title game. Last year, they dominated the East. They rolled all the way to Atlanta without any challengers, but then... There was King Nick again in the way with another fourth quarter situation. So this Georgia team has national championship aspirations. The question is, Jake Fromm, the quarterback, to get him there. Absolutely. I mean, he led, actually not led, the only two guys last year that were better in QBR than him, a guy named Kyler Murray, he was pretty good, and Tua Tungavailoa. He did things on the football field that we haven't seen in a long time, and I firmly believe there hasn't been a quarterback since Peyton Manning in college at Tennessee and even in the NFL that does what Jake Fromm does pre-snap. If you're watching tonight, watch him making signals, changing the play nearly every snap on offense. Well, he's got plenty of protection up front. What is now the biggest line in Georgia football history. For more on that size and talent, here's our talented Cole Kubelik. Tom, you mentioned big, 328.6 pounds per lineman to be exact, almost 1,700 total pounds for that starting five. The equivalent of all 16 of these Georgia cheerleaders. The plan is to lean on opponents, to use that bulk, and make people pay. That hopefully going to start for Kirby Smart's team tonight. So see if Vandy can get around those guys. Offensively, though, Vandy has some guys cannot just get around you but get past you. Their big three is as good as maybe Vandy's ever seen. And, look, when you sit down with Kirby Smart and he's like, hey, man, these three are as good as anybody that will face all year. It's not many times you hear a Vandy football team with a tight end that could start anywhere in the SEC, a receiver that could start anywhere in the SEC, and a running back that just might be the best in the SEC. It starts with Kalijah Lipscomb, the returning leader in receptions in the SEC. He's a dynamic playmaker on the outside, but this guy, Jared Pinckney, he decided to come back. Could have been possibly a second, third rounder in the NFL draft, but he's got more to prove. And Keyshawn Vaughn, this guy, is dynamic. He's also built like a brick house. We're going to see him run the football effectively tonight. We weren't sure who was going to be a quarterback. It was either Deuce Wallace, who's never started, or Riley Neal, the grad transfer from Ball State. At this point, it looks like Neal. What would we expect from him? Well, you just saw those three guys that we just talked about be a point guard, and I think that's why it's going to be Riley Neal. Over 7,000 yards, 46 touchdowns, 32 starts. Yeah, it wasn't in the SEC, but this guy knows how to play football. The quarterback that is best for Vandy is the one that can distribute to those three playmakers. It's going to feel like a road game for the home doors. They're outnumbered in their own building by a big margin. Georgia and Vandy coming up in a Vandy tradition to get us started. ESPN College Football brought to you by Chex Mix. Score the winning mix and Sling TV. The best of live TV and get thousands of top shows and movies on demand.
You're watching the SEC on ESPN. Well, the Georgia fans in the last couple of years have taken over everything from Notre Dame Stadium to the Rose Bowl to Wrigley Field. So it's no surprise that we would be in a sea of red tonight. Let's go down to the Georgia sideline. Colts standing by with Kirby Smart. Coach Smart, when you have a quarterback like Jake Fromm coming into a season opener, how much more does that put you at ease as a head coach? Well, you're never at ease when you got a lot of freshmen out there that haven't played, so it's never easy, but certainly better to have a veteran than a young guy. You have emphasized havoc and creating havoc for your defense all offseason. How do you ensure that that becomes the identity of your defense tonight? Play a game. we got to go play a game and find out where we are, and we've talked about it, but now you got to actually put the actions in place. Thank you, Coach. Thanks, Coach. Well, Jordan, as much promise as there is around this Georgia program, there are also questions. I think the biggest question for me, Tom, is actually on the defensive side of the ball. Yeah, they got some spots to fill at wide receiver, but I like that group on the defensive side of the football. They have to find a dominant pass rusher, somebody that can beat a man when they need it on a third down. They're going to eventually go up against Tua if they want to compete for a national title. Trevor Lawrence, yep. they got to get after the quarterback at some point. We'll learn a lot about that position tonight. Here's a guy on the Vandy sideline that knows how to put together a defense. Derek Mason in his sixth season as the head man here on Nashville's West End. Took the doors back to a bowl last season. He has re-energized his program. He has dominated the state of Tennessee. And believe me, that carries weight in this state and in this conference. Well, Nashville's a great town to be in. If you own a hotel or a bar, you made a ton of money this weekend. Riley Gay will handle the kickoff duties for Vanderbilt. Talent to return for Georgia, including the speedy James Cook. Flanked by Brian Harrion a few steps ahead. Underway in Nashville. Cook mishandled the kickoff, but will take a knee. So the veteran, Jake Fromm, the junior from Warner Robbins, Georgia, at Houston County High School. He emerged on the scene in the big stage playing in the Little League World Series back in 2011, and he's been used to the spotlight for a while. Already a web, web assault star. Took Georgia to the 2018 College Football Playoff National Championship. He has played in the biggest of stages. And the only question to me now is, how does this offense look? New offensive coordinator James Coley, yeah, he was the quarterback coach last year. But talking to Jake from this offseason, might see a little more tempo and a little more wide open offensive look. Brian Harrion will start the game at tailback. And Harrion rips one off straight ahead to pick up a first down. There is an embarrassment of riches in the Georgia backfield, and already we see two more running backs in her, James Cook and DeAndre Swift. Boy, what a way to start the game. The left side of that offensive line, Solomon Kinley, Andrew Thomas just caved the entire defensive line for Vandy and blew open a huge hole. 655 pounds of beef on the left side. Swing pass to Cook. And James Cook is able to get to the sideline. Another positive play. Let's take a look at tonight's impact players brought to you by Chick-fil-A. DeAndre Swift, the leading rusher from last year's team. Meanwhile, on the Vandy side, Dio Odobangbo. Odangbo is a guy who can be a difference maker defensively. And he's got to be. He's got the body type, the size that Vandy usually doesn't get and is able to recruit but he's got to show up to all the hype that's been around him this last year. Swift was a thousand yard rusher last season. Here's his first touch. It's a big one. Three plays, a pair of first downs, and more yardage coming after the flag was dropped at the end. It's a run of 16. Again, look at this giant hole on the right side. A great block there by center Trey Hill to hold off the point on that defensive line. 
Personal foul, horse collar tackle, number 31. David the Smith, the referee, a horse collar tackle. The tack on 15 more. First down. Not the start Vanderbilt was looking for. The doors are without one of their starters in the secondary. Frank Coppett, one of their veterans. And at the end of that one, horse collar? Mm. Didn't see it because it didn't happen. It's one thing we set down with Jason Tarver, the defensive coordinator for Vandy, is how to neutralize the big bodies of Georgia. Haven't seen a ton of slanting or stemming yet. I wonder if they start to go with that a little earlier than they wanted to. Fromm hands it off again. Swift makes a miss again. It's another Georgia first down. Fellas, they wanted to go inside zone to begin that portion, what we talked about in pregame, of imposing their will. I feel like the offensive line's splits are a little bit tighter than I saw a year ago. So the distance between center and guard, guard and tackle, they seem to have cut that down a little bit more, sticking with more inside zone scheme, trying to drive that football right down the teeth of the Vanderbilt defense. And that's what they've done. Gains of 11, 7, 16, and 11 yards on each of the first four plays, respectively. Jake Fromm was sensational in the red zone last season. On the end of round, this is Tyler Simmons. And Simmons rips off another big one. A gain of eight. Deshaun Jerkins, a redshirt freshman safety playing for Coppett, came up to make the stop. If you're a Vandy, this is the worst possible start you could think of. Vandy's already in their big set up front. Got three large defensive linemen trying to neutralize the size of Georgia. But I tell you what, when you can mix in the, the misdirection there with the speed that Georgia has, that's a tough recipe to handle. Second and a short two. Harry in. Fought his way back to the line of scrimmage. Ryan Harrion might be the one guy lost in the shadows of this loaded Georgia backfield. Senior from Douglasville, Georgia. Used mainly in mop-up duty in years past. Third down one. Straight ahead, first down. That line is a bunch of road graders. <laughs> it's really not fair, honestly. The size of those guys up front. You saw it in the open there. What, 326 across the board? And that's probably light. Those big boys, they probably put the weight a little lower than it actually is on the, <laughs> on, on the stat sheet. Yeah, I think they're a couple hot chickens above what they list. First and goal for Jake Fromm to throw it for the first time. Corner end zone, touchdown, Demetrius Robertson. A machine like March for Georgia, eight plays, 75 yards, and they took four minutes off the clock. Rodrigo Blankenship for the point after. And Georgia, one possession into the season, picks up right where they left off. They haven't lost to a team from their division in two years. And they're up seven zip after four minutes. run the football like Georgia's did just did it really opens up things in the play actually got man coverage here and look at the safety only guy that can really help on this is the safety right here but watch what that play action in the backfield does the effect the run game has on coverage especially this low actually it wasn't even play action there my bad man coverage but still all eyes in the backfield after what Georgia was just able to do running completely downhill all the way down the field and a great pitch and catch by Fromm and Robertson. They only faced one third down on their opening drive and the Cal transfer 
Demetrius Robertson, who had a tough time getting acclimated to the physicality of this new team and the expectations of Georgia, is off on the right foot. Blankenship kicks it off. No return for Jamari Wakefield. And the biggest mystery surrounding this Vanderbilt team been who would lead them out, replacing Kyle Shermer at quarterback. And it will be the transfer from Ball State, Riley Neal, who's a Muncie, Indiana native, was playing for his hometown school. Neal from Yorktown, just outside of Muncie, pretty good fisherman. He can golf a little bit. He had a growth spurt between ninth and 10th grade, tough to keep the shoes fitting properly then. And a grad transfer, what does he do well? Boy, he's got experience, and, and when you have the talent around the quarterback position that Vandy does, you just need the guy that can distribute the ball most efficiently. Working towards his master's degree, and he's got some upperclassmen surrounding him that are very talented. Keyshawn Vaughn set a Texas Bowl record the last time he was in a game, and he yanks off a gain of five. I firmly believe you put Keyshawn Vaughn on any roster in the SEC, nearly any roster in the country, he's going to be in the conversation as a starter and best player on that team. He could play anywhere, but the problem tonight, this offensive line for Vanderbilt, all five guys are starting in new positions for the very first time. Keep your eye on how they handle that Georgia defensive line. They had to shift some guys around due to injuries. Devin Cochran, the left tackle, is out, and that has created a monster shuffle up front. Here's the tight end, Jared Pinkney. Pinkney trying to fight his way through, and he is swarmed immediately. J.R. Reed, maybe the most talented player on this Georgia defense. The senior from Frisco, Texas, came in to swallow him up. J.R. Reed is the alpha of this defense. He's the undoubted leader. And really keep your eye on him because Jared Pinkney, I think, is the most dangerous weapon catching the football for Vandy. So it'll be Reed that's pointing out where he is, how they're trying to disguise him, especially on a third down like this. Keep your eye on Pinkney. Right there in the tight slot. Toss to Vaughn, needing three. And he got it, I believe. Aziz Ojolari came in on the stop. And it is a Vandy first down. And Tom, that's going to be the cat and mouse game that we're going to see when Vanderbilt's on offense. Where is Jared Pinkney? How is Georgia shading or taking care of him? And oftentimes, Vandy might go in the opposite direction as we see our new pylon cam here for the first down marker. Look good to me. Yeah, got the line to gain. We got all types of gadgets now. Play clock is at two. It's at one. It's at double zero. This sounds odd to ask, but you played here in this stadium. You played in this conference. Is Vanderbilt going to have to go to a silent count at home? I had to do it here multiple times. Offense, six, That's just the thing. When you got a city like Nashville, everybody wants to travel to this game. And this game has been circled on the calendar of Georgia fans and probably nearly other every other team on their schedule to come to this one. So, yes. Is that deflating yes, to come out here on the stadium and have to do that? 100%. To practice silent count and practice crowd noise when you're at home, absolutely. But at, as Vanderbilt, you got to hit a couple big plays. Hope you neutralize that noise early. Big playability from Vaughn and Lipscomb especially. And this is Vaughn spun his way free for just two. Ojolari, the redshirt freshman from Marietta, in on the stop for the Dogs. Keyshawn Vaughn was a great running back last year. He's a bigger, thicker, stronger running back this year. Tell you what, when we sat down with him, I looked at myself in the mirror after that, and I'm like, I got to get in the gym because this dude, he's rocked. I mean, his biceps, his chest, he, he can take the SEC physical toll, but he was really dynamic. Last seven games of the season last year, he lit it up. Here's Vaughn out of the backfield. And Vaughn, dragging dudes with him, takes it to the 40 for a gain of eight. Tate Crowder, the senior linebacker, who started the final four games last year for Georgia, whose season ended with consecutive losses. Fellas, I thought Derek Mason made an excellent hire bringing Tim Horton in as running back coach from Auburn. He's coached some great ones. Derek McFadden at Arkansas, on Johnson at Auburn. I said, what's the similar trait 
with Keyshawn Vaughn. He said, Cole, it's easy. Yards after contact. Guys, he told me before the game, 50% of his yards from a season ago came after contact. Horton would know he coached nine All-SEC running backs over 12 years between Arkansas and Auburn. Third down five. Neal drops, now steps up, and gets taken down from behind. Nolan Smith, the talented freshman out of IMG Academy, able to get to him. It won't count as a sack, but George is wondering where the quarterback pressures can come from. Nolan Smith might be the guy. Yeah, they brought it from the backside to corner blitz. That's one thing Kirby Smart was harping on having. We got to find ways to disrupt the football, get after the quarterback, create big momentum plays on defense. So that first chance on a third and passing situation, we see a big time blitz. Harrison Smith on to punt it away. Sophomore from down the road in Franklin, Tennessee. Kiaris Jackson inside the five will take a stab at him. And he gets taken down by the second man. Great punt coverage by the Vanderbilt Commodores. A 50-yard punt, 54-yard punt. Only six on the return. Elijah Hamilton to stop. ESPN College Football is presented by Hampton by Hilton. College football stays here. Book now at Hampton.com and in part by Infinity. Empower the drive. Let's take a look at Dumore to Jiffy, brought to you by Jiffy Loop. Opening drive for Georgia. Everything was positive, and the running backs played a major hand in it. Of the eight plays, seven of them went to three different running backs. But at the end, it was Jake Crom through the air, finding Demetrius Robertson. It's a Georgia team that lost a ton in the receiving court, raw, from raw numbers to leadership and production. And that's one of those questions we'll try to get an answer to, although I'm not sure tonight's going to If they need to, me. right? I yeah. mean, right now. <laughs> If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Keep running that football if you're Georgia. But yes, we do need to learn a little bit more moving forward about these receivers. Cook in motion, swift in the backfield from pressured, and he lets it go incomplete. Let's take you back to the studio and check in with Matt Barry. All right, 6.24 to go. Second possession for Georgia. We were asking ourselves during the break, what will Vandy do defensively? If they can get pressure on Fromm, that will be one answer. Yeah, and just a little delayed blitz on that one from Braden Devault Smith. Great job getting it and finishing it, but here we go. This is what Jake Fromm is best at, changing the play already at the line of scrimmage. Vandy brings an extra defender. The pass is complete. Matt Landers is a guy that Jake Fromm told us in the spring would, quote, wreck the SEC. Now, the coaches are still waiting for Landers to show more consistency, but it seems he has take the lid off kind of town. I mean, he's 6'5", 200 pounds. He can run a 4'4". Fromm right here, he saw the cushion. Vanderbilt giving a lot of cushion on the outside, so we audible the four verticals there, but on the outside, with that much cushion, it's just a 10-yard stop route. That's pitch and catch for a quarterback and a receiver like Landers. First catch for Matt Landers in his career. Redshirt sophomore from St. Petersburg, Florida. I can start on my signal. They're going to reset the game clock, apparently. So Matt Landers, new to playing time for Georgia. Lawrence Cager, a Miami transfer, new to the program. Demetrius Robinson. Relatively new to the program after transferring in from Cal. And we'll see youngster George Pickens, who the coaches have been raving about as part of the Georgia wide receiving core. Two tight ends. DeAndre Swift, the tailback. Swift. Slides his way through the left side. Another big gain. Again, the studio. Here's Matt Berry. Right 
All right, Matt, thanks. Second and one now for Georgia. This is a dangerous situation to be in here if you're Vanderbilt's defense. Second and one. Empty backfield now. Five wide receivers and a running back on the inside here for Fromm. And now Harrion will join him in the backfield. Here's Harrion with room and great vision for the first down. Speak, if you will, of the value of Jake Fromm as a game manager. Yeah, you know, a lot of times game manager gets a negative connotation, but let me tell you what's wrong with, oh, every single play. He can figure out what the defense is doing and change the play, get him in the right situation. He protects the football. He's dynamic. So I don't know what's wrong with game manager. I think that's a positive thing when you're Jake Fromm, but he is so much more than that. He is talented. He's a competitor. Just watch him before the snap. Nearly every play communicating to his offensive line, changing the play, hand signals. I mean, it's Peyton Manning. Five to one, touchdown to interception ratio last year for Fromm. And he wants to throw here. Unloads a deep ball. The only question mark answered. Demetrius Robertson with a catch of 53 yards. And that one might come back for holding. Flag in the area. Walking it back. Kirby Smart watching it on the big board. He's not so certain they got it right. Isaiah Wilson, 6'7", 340. The critics of Jake Fromm will say the deep ball is his biggest weakness. Long chat with James Coley at the team hotel yesterday. He's preaching to Fromm that the deep ball is a touch pass. Don't muscle it. Absolutely. I mean, Jake Fromm is not built like your prototypical long arm 6'3", 6'4", quarterback. He's a little shorter in stature. He's a little thicker through the midsection. So he's got a tendency to grit some of those throws. He's a baseball player, you know? Yeah. They have a tendency to do that sometimes. The more relaxed he is, the cleaner the ball comes out, just like you saw. So a rare negative play for the dogs, first and 20. On a crossing run. Plenty of room for Robertson this time. The speedster who started his career on the West Coast rips off a 17-yard run. Boy, Jordan, that one was big time because Vanderbilt runs a tackle-tackle twist on the inside of their defensive line, and it was not picked up. I believe Jake Fromm saw that pressure coming from the right side, knew he had to distribute that football quickly. That's the problem you get into if you're Vanderbilt pressuring a quarterback like Fromm. If you don't hit home quick, he's going to make you pay. Second down and three. Georgia one of the best on second down last season. And Harrion takes it straight ahead for a gain of six. It's the only game of the night. Monday we'll have Brian Kelly and ninth-ranked Notre Dame taking on Louisville. It's Scott Satterfield's debut for U of L. 80 by Pacific Cardinal Stadium on ESPN and the ESPN app. You think all those folks rode scooters to the game? Oh, aren't they everywhere? They it's are. It's unbelievable. Everywhere. Unbelievable. Nashville is popping, man. I mean, it doesn't matter if it's a Tuesday night in the middle of who cares what month it is. It is always alive. Just setting up a screen. Landers cuts it back. Matt Landers' second catch. He's showing a little bit what he can do. It's a gain of 15. You know, practice Saturday in Athens, Matt Landers looked like a guy who kind of disappeared at times. Yeah, but he's an athlete, and let me tell you, watch, we talk about how big these offensive linemen are. Watch these guys get out here and get on blocks. All three, left side of that offensive line, those are 330, 340 big boys getting out in the open field and laying blocks for Landers. We mentioned the weights of them, guys, but none of them are tubby. I mean, none no. of them walk around like chewed up bubble gum. I mean, they're all put together well. What? Chewed up <laughs> bubble gum? We call that ABC gum. Here's Swift. Off the left side, a gain of three. It's like, Cole, if you guys saw me with my shirt off, you'd be like, man, that guy looks like I chewed up a piece of gum and no, threw it on two legs. No thanks. As good as they are, and with the recruiting rankings that they all came in with, how difficult is it game one of the season to be in synchronicity with the rest of your line? It's always difficult, Tom, because practices have become limited. You know this because I've, I've told you this a hundred times. The only way to be a great offensive line is to do it against people that are trying to make you look bad and do it full speed in pads. 
those situations have been limited across the board in college football through spring and the fall, it makes forming continuity very difficult. A lot of guys coming to town wanting to play for Sam Pittman, their fine O-line coach. Here's Robertson. And George is stretching the field end to end with some of that movement. He rips off a gain of 15. Another stop for Jerkins, the young safety. We see a tight end Charlie Werner here, number 89, getting out and getting ahead of Robertson on that play with a great block. Vandy's having a tough time right now because Georgia is going downhill, and then the next play they're throwing a screen or they're getting on the perimeter, mixing up the play calling very well early for a guy that hasn't done it in a while. James Coley, new offensive coordinator. Yep, he was an offensive coordinator of both Miami and Florida State, had a bunch of first-rounders at quarterback when he was with Jimbo Fisher in Tallahassee. Here's James Cook. Cook's got the 10-5 touchdown. Two possessions for Georgia, a pair of scores. Cook takes it in from 18. It's just an embarrassment of riches right now. Everybody that touches the ball runs a 4-4 and is dynamic. And I tell you what, those last two plays, you might not see it sit on the couch, but they're going to see it in film. And Charlie Werner, two great blocks that sprung both those plays for a tight end that sometimes gets a little over overlooked. Needs a little love. Fromm's the kind of guy to give it to him. Rodrigo Blankenship punches it through. Didn't miss a point after last year. Perfect to start this season. The Georgia Bulldogs are off to a rollicking start here in Music City. James Cook, the sophomore from Miami, has the dogs up 14 zip. and passionate fans like the Vanderbilt Commodores by awarding the best student section of the year. Go to ESPN.com slash Taco Bell to see if your team made this week's rankings and see how your school can compete. Freshmen did the anchor dash on their way into the stadium today. They finally all found their seats, 1,600 of them, in this incoming class. Not exactly easy to get in. Meanwhile, Georgia sold some tickets. This is the most expensive ticket on the secondary market in all of college football this weekend. Jamari Wakefield wants to return. He won't get a chance. We got a chance to go to the studio. Hello, Matt Berry. Kind of smells like Appalachian State in the big house, doesn't it? At least early. Northern Iowa Don't had a chance them. today. Don't Northern Iowa them. and Iowa State. You can't say that. It's like pitching a no-hitter. Rick Stockstill's what team doing? looking for a major win. Here's Kalijah Lipscomb. Reverses field and tries to get back up against this Georgia defense on the reception. From Riley Neal, J.R. Reed, the stop, gain of three. Really important drive here for new offensive coordinator Jerry Godowski for Vanderbilt. He's been around the program since Mason in 14, so he's kind of worked his way up to this position. Big question was how different is this offense going to look? I haven't seen anything different yet. And Riley Neal is a very similar skill set to a record-setting quarterback for Vandy that just graduated last year and is now in the NFL in Kyle Shermer. But they got to get something going and get something going in a hurry before this gets out of hand. Second down seven. And Vaughn gets blasted, but another positive carry. The big three have been good for Vandy here early on, but it's Georgia's big everything so far. Dogs have run 18 plays. They already have 159 yards of offense. They have yet to be stopped. It's Georgia 14, Vanderbilt nothing through one quarter in Nashville. College football primetime is brought to you by Hampton by Hilton. With more than 2,000 locations, you can follow your team anywhere. Great to be here in Nashville. Our team, Tom Hart, Jordan Rogers, Cole Kublik. 
And Georgia's brought their team along. They're averaging nine yards of play through their first two drives. And now Vanderbilt with a key third and short. Huge third down. And I'm not so sure I feel good about running the football, so I'm looking for Jared Pinckney there. Tight end position, top of your screen. Riley Neal, the Ball State transfer out of the shotgun. Georgia shows pressure from the edge. They lay off. Neal's going to try to take off with it. Turf Monster got him, and then Tay Crowder cleaned it up. No gain, and that'll bring up fourth down. I don't like the play call here, Tom, and I actually have a feeling that I think that was called. I'm not so sure that was a read for Riley Neal as much as it was. Let's go for it. Obviously, the slow snap does not help. He's not allowed to get his eyes up, but that's not his strong suit. He's not an athletic quarterback. He's not going to beat you off the edge. And to me, on a third and short, if I got a choice to run with my quarterback or find my tight end, this should or could be playing in the NFL, I choose that one. So fourth down, they're going to fake it straight ahead. Vandy trying to take some chances, and it looks like it paid off. All right. Okay. So he rewind one okay. play. Does it make a little bit more sense? Love it now. Oh, direct, direct snap straight to the up back. Deshaun Jerkins, the safety there, getting his his reps in on the offensive side of the ball. Scouting uh, report on Jerkins was simple. They say he plays with his hair on fire, and that was coming from his defensive coordinator who lives his life like that, the high-energy Jason Tarver. New life for Vanderbilt here. Pinkney, the tight end, shifted to the left. Another... Less than perfect snap. Justin Shelton Mosley, the Harvard transfer, has got a first down on the reverse. And Vandy now rolling the dice, and it's paying off. A 22-yard run for Justice Shelton Mosley, the Harvard grad. I love how they set this play up. They motion Pinckney to the left side, go unbalanced. Three guys to the left, only one backside. And Cole, we were talking in break. Vandy's got to start going to misdirection, unbalanced, got to find a way to get things going in the positive direction. Neal chased, fired a bullet incomplete. Tyler Clark brought the pressure that time. Jordan, I agree. It just doesn't feel like anything initially is home as designed for Vanderbilt. And you actually saw two players with a little bit of rocket motion coming across the line of scrimmage after the ball was snapped on that play, kind of showing a little inside zone with motion waggle back behind it. Those are the things Vanderbilt's going to have to do to try to create some space. You're going to have to take an aggressive Georgia defense and get them out of position by using their aggressiveness against them. So one way that the Havoc plays and the Havoc rate could go against Georgia, the emphasis that you asked Kirby Smart about before the game. Snaps have been an adventure. Here's Keyshawn Vaughn taken down in the open field by J.R. Reed, and we've got a flag back in the heart of the offensive line. Holding number 63 on the offense. Ten yard penalty from the previous David spot. David Smith is a Replay, referee. Second down. The holding came from the center. Grant Miller, one of many from St. Thomas Aquinas out of Fort Lauderdale on this Vandy roster. Right there at center, a high snap as well. It's just that last move, and he's in great position, but you can't have any kind of tug. Your hands get away from or outside of your shoulders. Got to let them go. Jordan, almost every snap out of the shotgun this drive has been off the mark, sometimes by much, sometimes by just a little. It's not like you got pushovers on the other side of the line. That's got to be a lot of pressure for a quarterback. It's, yeah, it's a whole mental thing if you're at center and you're Grant Miller. But we mentioned all five offensive linemen starting for the first time in these spots. And, oh, yeah, Riley Neal, first SEC game. He'd like that thing to be right on the numbers. Facing one of the best defenses in college football on second down now. Looking for a screen. Neal rolls and dumps it. The screen game was so important for Vandy in years past, but that time Keyshawn Vaughn never got out of the backfield. He got tripped up and dropped. And we got a flag in the backfield where Riley Neal was, and that's going to be intentional grounding. Intentional grounding for six on the offense. So he's trying to find Vaughn, but Vaughn never got out of traffic. Watch number five in the middle. 
Yeah, he's on the ground. That's tough. That's tough as a quarterback. You're taught if it just goes, goes to nothing, if nothing's there, throw it straight in the ground. But if the ball would have gotten to the line of scrimmage because he was outside the pocket, maybe that flag never gets thrown. Yep. But on a screen, then as a quarterback, you also worry about linemen downfield. Sure. So that's just that's tough when your quarterback ends, excuse me, your running back ends up on the ground. Third and 31. Four-man rush, quick release to the exterior. And just as Shelton Mosley from the Ivy League to the SEC, they got folded in half and they got taken down five yards after the whistle again. And he's thinking even Yale wasn't this mean. Tell you what, they're a little bigger in between the hashes here in the SEC <laughs> <It's a little laughs> than he probably ever saw at Harvard. He's going to learn very quickly a screen like that. You go hash, numbers, sideline. Get outside as quickly as possible. You're going to see here a little extracurricular activity there. Richard LeCount. Another punt for Vandy. Tyler Simmons will ask for a fair catch, and he'll take it at the 19-yard line. Georgia's had two possessions. They have two touchdowns. Jake Fromm, stay perfect tonight. Welcome back to the SEC on ESPN. In this conference, it just means more, and thanks to Jake Fromm arriving in Athens, it just means more airline miles for everybody else. When Jake Fromm showed up, Jacob Eason was the incumbent. After one game, Fromm took over for him, and Eason took off back to his home state of Washington. So the effect continued. Colson Yankoff transferred to UCLA, a second Washington quarterback, has also announced that since Easton's the starter, Jake Hayner will also transfer. Justin Fields had a great game for Ohio State today. He left Georgia to go to Columbus, and that caused Tate Martell to hightail it down to South Beach. That's the most impactful quarterback in all of college football right there. I mean, he's a five-star beater. If you're a five-star on the roster with Jake Fromm, see ya. Eason threw for 349 and four. Field scored four touchdowns through the air and one on the ground. Let's take you to Matt Berry back in the studio. All right, Matt, thanks. Big one next week with Texas and LSU. That's going to be a huge one. I'm going to see if LSU's got any kind of offense different than what we've seen. Joe Brady over there, but Texas put the beat down on Georgia in the playoffs last year. Excuse me, the postseason. Here's James Cook out of the backfield, and Cook scrambles his way towards the line to gain, and he'll say it was the first down for Georgia on a gain of six. So you take one bowl game last year, the finish of the season for Texas, and would you subscribe to the three words that we hear all the time, Texas is back? I think so. The way they're recruiting with Sam Ellinger, I think he's a, he's very similar to Jake Fromm here as far as the type of quarterbacks they are. They're not the flashy ones, don't have the biggest arm. They are competitors. They are field generals. And you know what? They're just winners. So Texas is a team to watch for sure, and that game against LSU is going to have big ramifications moving forward for the college football playoff. Fromm hands it off to Swift. Thousand yard rusher last year. Swift takes it for a gain of 10 on first down. Running right behind Big 74 guys, Ben Cleveland making his first appearance in the game. They had a heck of a battle for Coach Sam Pittman in fall camp between Cade Mays and Ben Cleveland. Both started a couple of games a year ago. Both played great football. But Ben Cleveland seems like he's from a different planet. He is 342 pounds. Mm. And if you can get a shot from behind him right now and just standing there, look at the waist, 342 pounds for that dude. He is a behemoth of a man. If you saw him on I-40, it would be labeled oversized load. He wears size 17 cleats. Play action from Swift. Ron pulls it back, hits his target, Lawrence Cage, the Miami transfer. Takes it all the way down to the 21. 36 yards on play action. That big offensive line opens holes for running back, sucks defenses in, and then that. And the biggest effect is in the secondary. You're not going to be able to see it, but the corner to the left side of your screen gets sucked up by the play action for who knows why. And that's exactly why he was that wide open. Fromm has started this game 7 of 8 for 97 yards. Georgia is averaging 
9.9 yards of play to this point. This is the Dogs' third possession of the game. Swift, huge hole on the right side. And DeAndre Swift has him knocking on the door again. That one covers 16 yards. And a great audible right there by Jake Fromm. He saw the box. There was only five guys in the box for Vandy, so he audibles very quickly at the last second as Vandy rolls to a run play. He just counting. That is the seventh play of 15 yards or more for this Georgia offense. He's just counting he, who's in the box. Jake Fromm just simple? walking to the line of scrimmage. Oh, I got four over here, three over here. I'm going to go to this side. I only got five in the box. It's a pass play called. I'm going to run it. And he has full command of this offense right now. And here's another check from the junior quarterback. He sees pressure coming from right here at the top of his screen. He was right, and he fires that direction incomplete, and a flag coming down. He was trying to find the freshman George Pickens, who got taken down. Max Worship, the sophomore defensive back, did all he could to keep Pickens from finding the football. Again, great recognition that after the blitz is going to be man coverage. A little pick play that's there on the inside by Demetrius Robinson. Foul occurred to in open the it up zone. for George Pickens, and that's a touchdown line. if it's First not a flag. Down. That is a touchdown if there's no P.I. So if you're Vandy, it's all you could do. What well, makes Jake Fromm so good at identifying what's coming? You just, I mean, he has seen everything. You can't hide coverage. You can't hide blitzes. He is going to see it. And that's why Jason Tarver said we got to roll late. we got to try to disguise well. But even still, Jake Fromm has a beat on everything Vandy's doing. His tailback is DeAndre Swift. Charlie Werner, the tight end, on the right side. Swift, physical, and is able to pick up a yard, but he's short of the end zone. You know, Jordan, I'm surprised we haven't seen more movement pre-snap from that Vanderbilt defensive line to at least try to cause some sort of confusion and maybe free up a defender to be able to get a little penetration. Yeah, we've seen it from Georgia. Georgia stemmed on the other side of the ball last second, moving all their D linemen a gap over. And really, that just creates a little bit of confusion, a little last second, second guessing by the offensive line. So I I'm with you. Vandy's got to start doing something. All the bigs are in for both sides, including Eli Wolf at a fullback position in front of Harrion. Harrion behind Wolf, and he is in. Touchdown, Georgia again. Vandy actually does a good job of getting low there on the defensive line, trying to create some havoc in the backfield, but it's just too easy. If there's two feet, Harrion's going to find it, and that's all he needed. What he got? Elbow came down a little early there, but it looks like the ball just broke the plane. A 79-yard drive that took four minutes and three seconds off the clock. Every drive has been methodical and soul-crushing for the Georgia Bulldogs. Just about midway through the second quarter. Georgia 21 zip. ESPN College Football brought to you by Mitsubishi Motors. Drive your ambition. And Chex Mix. Score the winning mix. Well, it's turned into one of the nation's great sports towns, Nashville, Tennessee. They dominated the draft this past spring. And we'll see much more of them coming out of the SEC. Let's take a look at this week's preseason AP Top Ten rankings. Brought to you by Chick-fil-A. No issue for Clemson, Alabama, or Ohio State. And so far, no issue for Georgia. Oklahoma will match up with Houston later this weekend. Rodrigo Blankenship with a bright green tee and a chance for Jamari Wakefield. Wakefield tries to turn up field. He's immediately met. Takes it to the 20. Here's Matt Berry.
Wow, that's filthy. <laughs> that is filthy. Now, Auburn had some travel issues. They got delayed a couple hours on the tarmac yesterday. They did their walkthrough at Montgomery Regional Airport before they flew out to DFW. So it was a late night for the Tigers, and it looks like there's still some rust around Gus Malzahn's team at this point. Sean Vaughn able to pick up a couple and a helmet comes rolling off. No, we haven't really seen Vandy attempt to push the ball downfield. At some point, you're going to have to. Right now, Georgia is rolling a safety down late before the snap, adding to the box, threatening them to do anything downfield. Does Riley Neal have the arm strength to do that? He, he absolutely does. Yeah, he's talented. He can throw the football. But right now, he does look a little confused. David Smith again. Personal foul, face mask, number 92 on the defense. A penalty is 15 yards from the end of the run. First down. Once the end of the play, number five and does not whoa, have to come out of the game right off. his helmet coming off. That doesn't feel good. That chin strap is tight. It's not meant to come off like that. Monty Rice looked pretty strong there. <laughs> he is. Vaughn came out. He didn't have to. The helmet did come off, but it was ripped off, so he could have stayed in. Jamari Wakefield in his place. Another high snap, and they swing it out to Pink. Tight end is able to bowl his way forward, and they'll be just short. Next Saturday, we'll have some can't-miss college football action. Doubleheader on ABC in the ESPN app. Number one, Clemson hosting 12th-ranked Texas A&M at Death Valley at 3.30 Eastern, 12.30 Pacific. Then our Saturday night football game presented by Wells Fargo. Number six, LSU. Number 10, Texas at 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific. Kalijah Lipscomb to midfield. And Vandy able to pick up the first down. That's a set I expect to see a lot more out of Vandy. They went three receivers to the bottom of the screen. And they left Jared Pinkney, their star tight end at the top. And they said, are you going to double him? Or are you going to add a safety to the three receiver side? That time, they kept the safety in the corner over Pinkney. Through to their three receiver side, Georgia just rallied really well to the ball. Looks like they got a safety helping on Pinkney again. Neal looking to the left away from him. Pinkney all alone. Neal's going to scramble. And Neal, short of the marker, ends up all the way to the wall. And late hit will bring multiple flags. After the play was over, personal foul, late hit out of bounds, number one on the defense. 15 yard penalty, first down. I believe that's Devon Wilson. He's wearing number one, so Georgia didn't put out a two deep, and the roster has Wilson as number eight. But then again, Vandy didn't release their quarterback, didn't tell anybody who the starting quarterback was going to be. College football, baby. Secrecy in week one. Indeed. All around. Here comes pressure from the edge with Neal under center. Double pass. Quick hitter to the outside. They'll let it go. Cam Johnson to the end zone. Incomplete. And there's another flag on Georgia. Pinckney was right there. And Tyson Campbell met him before the ball got there. I love the play call. Motion to a three-receiver bunch, a quick throw to the outside. Ball needs to get out a little sooner and maybe with a spiral, but Tyson Campbell, if he just turns his head here, oh, that's so close. If he turns his head there, even with that contact, it's so close, I don't think they throw that flag. But because he has no vision on the ball, that penalty is declined. Second down. It's a PI every time. Vandy oh. had an ineligible receiver downfield. So they'll end up with a second and 10 with the ball at the 26. Second down. And 10. Another try for the doors. This is second and 10. And they'll run it to the near side with Keyshawn Vaughn. 
And Vaughn forced out of bounds by Mark Webb. It's a gain of eight. Riley Neal on the Johnny Unitas watch list. The best quarterback in college football working towards his masters in learning diversity and urban studies. The grad transfer from Ball State where he had 32 starts. And this is his first in SEC action. Third and two it's loud. Vaughn. Nope it's Neal and he'll dance for the first down. Riley Neal had a game in high school at Yorktown High School where he ran the ball 40 times in a single game. Wow. He did it because the defense allowed it. He's very rarely run anything close to that since. No, he's built like your prototypical quarterback, long, lanky. I mean, he's, he's enough of an athlete, but they're not going to major in that. Also, this isn't the West Lafayette High School defense <laughs> on the other very side. Very true. He has made the right reads, though, when he's pulled those zone reads, though. Pistol look with Vaughn behind him, Pinkney off to the side. He's going to keep it again, Pinkney with a nice seal on the edge. And then a flag afterwards. Pinkney was trying to get Richard LeCount down. I think they might have a holding call here on Pinkney. Yep. I was about to give him credit for a good block. It was good until the flag came. Yeah. Holding number 80 on the offense. 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Replay, first down. He's got, he's got his hands a little outside here. Does a great job getting in position, but right there. Hands on the outside of LeCount's shoulder and pulls him down. He's okay right there. They're not going to call that, but right here, as LeCount starts to turn, Pinkney's got to let him go. We think the ineligible a couple of plays ago was on Pinkney. That's where the flag was thrown. So it's the second one on the tight end in this drive. And it leaves the doors with first and 16. Georgia showed pressure again. And Kirby timeout. Smart's going to use a timeout. Georgia. They're first. Vandy has penetrated as deep into Georgia territory. And this drive is ahead all night. Trying to spoil the shutout. Back to ESPN College Football Primetime presented by Hampton by Hilton. Let's take it back a couple of plays on the ineligible receiver down here. You're going to see the outside receiver clearly on the ball, which means Pinckney has got to step back and be off the ball. His helmet directly in line with the right tackle. So he's allowed to block from there, but as soon as he releases, goes downfield, and that ball crosses the line of scrimmage, ineligible. Big loss for Vandy if they don't end up getting a touchdown here or points. And then after the holding penalty on Pinckney, another mistake, first and 16. Empty backfield for Riley Neal. And he whips it to the edge. That's complete to Keyshawn Vaughn. And it'll gain some ground, but they'll be looking at second and almost 12 now. Boy, if I'm Vandy, I like that five wide situation because if I'm Riley Neal, I'm looking to the left at my tight end, Jared Pinkney, in one-on-one -on -one coverage. Wouldn't be surprised if upstairs right now, Jerry Godowski's going, I like my mismatches there. I like getting my guys one-on-one -on -one and giving my quarterback a clean slate with a lot of space to look at who's going to be open. Jerry Godowski, the new offensive coordinator, was a great quarterback for Tom Osborne and those fantastic Nebraska teams back in the late 80s. And look, two defenders over Pinkney at the top of your screen on that side. Neal keeps it again. The hesitation doesn't work. No gain. Tyler Clark there. Let me ask you this. If Vanderbilt is going to run this style of offense, why have Riley Neal at quarterback instead of Deuce Wallace? Not sure. Uh, we know that competition was close. We know Riley Neal got it because of his ability to throw the football. Deuce Wallace is a better runner. I, if, if I'm Gadowski, I'm thinking, let's put him in there for a couple plays. If that's what we want to do, then take him out but I just don't get it. I wouldn't major in running the football with Riley Neal. That's not him. That's not his game. It is Deuce Wallace's game, third and long. On the road at home for Vandy. Neal with some space. And he tried to fit it into Cam Johnson. They'll say complete. It'll bring up fourth down. And the field goal unit will come on for the Commodores. 
It's a good catch. Get control of the ball. It's, it's allowed it. to hit the turf. Yep. But again, back to that ineligible receiver downfield. They'd have been inside the five-yard line with a fresh set of downs just because of a mental mistake. Their best player, Jared Pinkney, has got to know he's got to be off the ball there. 26-yard attempt for Riley Gay. Harrison Smith, the punter, is his holder. And that one just sneaks over. Went right off somebody's fingertips, but it got enough behind it. And Jordan Davis says, man, look how big my hands are. How did that thing get over the crossbar? A 12-play, 72-yard shot, big push up front, and big number 99, a fingertip away from batting it backwards. Hey, Cole. Season for every field goal and extra point made by participating universities. Allstate will make a contribution to the university's general scholarship fund. Thank you, Allstate. Riley Gay's field goal from 26 yards out has Vandy on the board. James Cook back to receive. Cook wants to bring it out from five yards deep. Full head of steam, and he's finally corralled. Let's get you back to the studio with Matt. Thanks. One of those SEC teams, Missouri, has gone on the road to Laramie, Wyoming. They've allowed 17 unanswered to the Cowboys in Kelly Bryant's Mizzou debut. Wyoming up 17 to 14. They haven't beaten a Power Five opponent since 2008 when they beat Tennessee. DeAndre Swift able to rip off seven yards. This is a dangerous point for Vandy defense. Already 21 to three, got two minutes left, two timeouts. That's an eternity for Jake Fromm in this offense. They can run, they can run the football when they need to. They can throw it, they can play action. Vandy's gotta be really careful here if Georgia decides to take a shot. Georgia has scored on every possession. And before that field goal, Vanderbilt had punted on every possession. Pressure coming up the middle from Johnson. And it's the tight end ball for the first time. Charlie Werner is as reliable a receiver as Jake Fromm has coming into the season. And if you play soft, he'll do that all the way down the field. All the way down the field. Jake Fromm will take what you give him. And sometimes that's the most dangerous type of quarterback to go against. Ben Cleveland left. Cade Mays replaces him at right guard. It's not just the starting offensive line that's good, it's deep. The only one they're missing, Jamari Sawyer, who will not practice tonight. He had an ankle injury. Not sure when he will return. He's been in a boot for the last few. Fromm pulled it back, then had a batted back. Kenny Abair was able to bat it down. Coming up at halftime, you can watch the live performance of the Spirit of Gold on SEC Network Plus. Start streaming now on the ESPN app. Georgia looking at a second and ten. Seems like the only thing that can stop them in this first half is the clock. Andy's in man coverage here. Fromm finds it. Back shoulder route incomplete. Tyler Simmons, the intended receiver. Dale Dango got in the backfield and put a hit on him. Great job looping here. Nice little stunt. Fromm wanted to push the ball downfield, just had to get rid of it sooner than he thought, and that's a, that's a tough throw. 
Back shoulder on the sidelines with 10 right in the chest. This will be the 30th play of the night for Georgia. It's the Bulldogs second third down out of 30 plays. Pressure coming from the edge. Fromm eludes it, fires middle, incomplete. Tyler Simmons left his feet to try and find it. And for the first time tonight, Georgia will bring on their punter. Another stunt here by Vandy. You're going to see 41 Elijah McAllister coming all the way from the left side, putting a little bit of pressure on Fromm. Had to let that one go under duress and just sailed on him. It's a big stop for Vandy. Justice Shelton Mosley back. He's an FCS All-American in the return game for Harvard. Thought about a fair catch, lets it go. And will trickle into the end zone. A 65-yarder that time. Well, Jake Camarda. Keeping up the consistency for Georgia being excellent at everything they've done tonight. Well, Monday night will be the only game of the night. Brian Kelly and number nine, no, number nine Notre Dame taking on Louisville. Or Appalachian State coach Scott Setterfield takes over for Louisville. It's 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific from Cardinal Stadium on ESPN and the ESPN app. Step away for a timeout here in Nashville. 106 to go. No six to go from Vanderbilt Stadium here in the first half. Third ranked Georgia has been rolling. They're up 21 3. All three timeouts here. Get a high percentage play here so you can get four or five yards and get some momentum going. Mandy moved the ball well the last time. There it is. And a move with Keyshawn Vaughn. Vaughn had three runs of 66 yards or more in the Texas Bowl. He was one of the most explosive running backs in the SEC last season. Neal fires and he's got a completion to CJ Bowler. First time they've gone to Bowler. Gain of nine. Boy, I'd have called a timeout right there. And they will. Yeah. They cost them probably five seconds or so. Tom Vanderbilt, they're first. This will be a so it'll be second and short for this Vanderbilt team. Derek Mason had a decision make between Deuce Wallace and Riley Neal at quarterback. Uh, Deuce Wallace is a guy that is a dual threat quarterback. You would think that'd be better against his Georgia defense. Why do you think they decided on Neal? You know what, Jerry Godowski even mentioned we'd like to get more 11-man football involved, which means running the quarterback, getting all guys involved. So sitting down, I thought it was going to be Deuce, but you pick Riley Neal because of the experience. Because when blitzes are coming on third downs, he's been there. He's yeah. done that. Deuce hasn't had a ton of game time experience to do that. But I tell you what, Riley Neal has looked shaky. His eye, eyes haven't been in the right spot at times. His feet have been going a little bit fast. Now in this two-minute drill is the first I've seen him calm down a little bit with a nice, easy throw there. And they did say that Riley Neal won the job. He said, they said Deuce Wallace was good, but Riley Neal was better. Pressure coming from the edge. Neal has to scramble again. He's been on the run all night. Another twist up front from that Georgia defensive line. We've mentioned it earlier in the broadcast. When you have five new offensive linemen in five spots, it's not just verbal communication, guys. It's physical communication. When your defender leaves to another gap and there's going to be one looping around, you have to bump your neighbor off to be able to pick that twist up. I don't want to live in your neighborhood. Riley Neal with the sneak. The time pick up the first down, 31 seconds left. I think we get spoiled when you watch Jake Fromm because you watch Jake Fromm and you see pressure coming. You think that every quarterback can do that. No, they can't. And again, I mean, again, you lose four seconds there. That timeout should timeout. be automatic. Vanderbilt, they're second. This will be a 30 second timeout. Gives us a chance to talk about next Saturday's slate. Can't miss football. Doubleheader on ABC and the ESPN app. We are at Texas A&M a couple of nights ago. They get to go to Death Valley, the 12th ranked team in the country, to take on the number one team in the country, the Clemson Tigers, 3.30 Eastern, 12.30 Pacific. Then our Saturday night football game presented by Wells Fargo, number six LSU, number 10 Texas at 7.30 Eastern, 
4.30 Pacific. Cole, the question mark for AM coming into the season prior to Clemson, did they have the secondary that could hold up? Their secondary looked really good against a mismatched opponent on Thursday. They did. They've upgraded the talent, but still don't have a ton of experience on that side of the football time. You go back and watch Clemson AM from a year ago, it was not the Clemson Tigers marching the football up and down the field. Four or five big plays, some missed tackles, a couple jump balls deep ended up being the difference in that game. The AM secondary neutralizes the Clemson receivers. Aggies have a great chance to win that game. Unfortunately, not many people have neutralized that group of receivers. So out of the timeout with one timeout remaining. And a flag against Vandy coming out of the timeout. Prior to the snap, false start. Number 72 on the offense. Five-yard penalty. Seventh flag so against the Commodores tonight. We mentioned earlier, everybody on this Vandy offensive line is starting seconds. in a new position. First time ever, the redshirt freshman from Staten Island, New York, Dan Dawkins moved. Thank you. Just bad clock management so far. There should be eight to ten more seconds on the clock, especially after that QB sneak. Should be telling the, the ref, hey, as soon as it's spotted, I want a timeout. I don't want to run another play. That's four or five seconds you could have back. Neal hangs a U-turn. They'll whistle this one dead. Movement again up front for Vandy. Prior to the snap, start number 16 on the off five yard. That time two. it was the wide Still receiver Elijah Lipscomb. Please move. reset the game clock to 27 seconds. All that seconds. momentum two, from the first couple plays gone. What do you do in the locker room if you're Derek Mason? Thank you. That's a great question. I mean, you got to talk to the defense, especially your defensive coordinator, Jason Tarver. What can we do to stop this running attack? We got to do something more. We got to stunt. We got to move. We got to add guys to the box. We got to take more risks. And on offense, you got to talk to Riley Neal. Hey, take a deep breath. Right? That's one half. Let's forget about that. Short memory. Now you got your feet wet. But we got to be better on offense at the little things, the mental mistakes, the false starts. Can't have that. When you had positive momentum here on a two-minute drill to close the half. Not just his feet wet. He's been underwater. Oh, yeah. He's there again and able to get it away to Keyshawn Vaughn. And Vaughn gets taken down maybe by a face mask. That'll tack out a few more. Richard LeCount came in to make the play and got happy hands. 12 yards on the game plus more coming. You think we see a quarterback change at the half for Vandy? I don't think it would be at the half. I think, if anything, you give Riley Neal another drive or another couple drives. Personal foul, face mask on the defense, number two. 15-yard penalty will be added to the end of the It run. is on the count. First down. But at some point, this offense has got to get the ball going in the right direction. He can't rely just on penalties and mental mistakes by Georgia to get big plays. Face mask extends to the ear hole of the helmet. Deuce Wallace. Lost the quarterback competition to Neal. Caught by C.J. Buller as he went down. Timeout taken, the last timeout. of the half for Vanderbilt. Vanderbilt, their third and final timeout of the half. This will be a 30-second timeout. They'd probably like a couple more to feel good about a field goal. That short route wasn't quite enough. Neal in this game has been under duress, but when he's been able to stand tall, he's delivered it. 11 of 13 for 63 yards. Again, though, nothing downfield. No vertical passing attack. The, the, the longest throw I think we've seen was the trick play, the double yep. pass, which came back at some point. I got to see his quarterback push it downfield. And yeah, that didn't even come from Neal. That came yeah, from that's the wide what I mean. receiver, yeah. Johnson. You got a guy named Kalijah Lipscomb that you yes. can at least take those shots to. And Pinkney. Get Pinkney going vertical. Get Kalijah going vertical. This Dinkin and Duncan ain't going to cut it when Georgia can score points at will on the other side of the ball. Maybe Neal's being too nice to his receiving core. Lipscomb's only been targeted twice, and Pinckney only three times. It's the next name of your next reality show. Dinkin and Duncan ain't going to cut it. <laughs> <laughs> here we go, though. I like this set here, five wide. Makes it easy on Riley Neal to see spacing. Georgia's going to use the timeout. Georgia, they're second. That's the this second a time second in that set, out. Kirby has said Boom. timeout. Kirby Smart almost strangled his own visor. He is not happy. 
That's been probably the last five or six plays of this drive, fellas. If you don't think this is an important drive for the Georgia Bulldogs and Kirby Smart, just watch the way that he's been acting on the sideline here on this two-minute drive. He has been out on the field. He's been pulling guys in and out of the lineup. He's been trying to direct traffic as far as getting certain individuals aligned. A lot of personal individual coaching going back and forth between the head coach and this Georgia defense on this drive. Channing Tyndall caught the spittle that time. Kirby's got a new defensive coordinator, Dan Lanning. Mel Tucker left and took the job at Colorado. Lanning played his college ball at William Jewell outside of Kansas City and was with Kirby Smart on the national championship squad at Bama in 2015. No timeouts here. This ball has got to get out of bounds if you're Vandy. Whoa, way offside. Take a shot. Replay. Lobs it down the sideline and incomplete. He was trying to find C.J. Buller. Offside on the defense, number 19, five yard penalty Adam from Anderson. the previous spot. Replay, second down. As Georgia looks for some guys that can give him a presence off the edge. Great job of the double count, of the hard count by Riley Neal there. And good job of recognizing, I got a free play, I'm going to take a shot. You might get a P.I. there, you might have Bowler come down with that. And really that five yards is what you needed to feel a little bit better about this field goal right here. Cost him some time at the very least. This will be a 46-yard attempt for Riley Gay. Timeout, Georgia. And a timeout taken. Their third and final timeout of the half. This will be a 30-second timeout. Landing the defensive coordinator in the black polo, Kirby Smart, the head coach in the red. How about Georgia and the start from Jake Fromm? This was the capper of the opening drive. Put it in the air twice in the opening drive. Able to put it in the belly of so many great running backs, including James Cook and then Brian Harrion. They've just been rolling. I mean, this offensive line has exerted their will on Vanderbilt. When you run the football like that, the play-action pass is wide open. But when's the last time you saw this, Tom? A football coach at this level saying, everybody get on a knee like high school, like, like Pop Warner ball. We did it at Bainbridge, boys. He is not happy with really the mental execution on this drive. It's been mental mistakes, alignment. He's keeping his get-back coach busy. <laughs> he is. More like a tow truck. Riley Gay comes from a hockey family. His dad played hockey at Notre Dame. An uncle that played on the 84 U.S. Olympic team and in the NHL. And Gay has been inconsistent with a slap shot. Only 4 of 10 in his career from 40 yards plus. Harrison Smith is his holder. Scott Meyer, the snapper. Vanderbilt looking for momentum. Got the distance. Drilled and it. it's good. Riley Gay with a couple of long balls for Vandy. And the Commodores will get the ball to start the second half. Huge momentum drive right there. I mean, in the face of adversity, in the face of a couple false start penalties, you think, well, maybe we just run this and, and haze in the barn. Let's go to the locker room and fix things. A couple big plays later and a penalty. Get back in a field goal position. So it changes the message from Derek yes. Mason. The question is, does it change how you think about your quarterback play? Because that hasn't necessarily improved with the two field goals. I, I think you still have to talk to your offensive coordinator, Jerry Gadowski, if you're Derek Mason, and go, hey, we got to start taking some chances here. And, and so we can evaluate Riley here. Because yeah. right now, we don't know. The Dinkin and Duncan here, we know he's not an athlete, so what has he really shown us? One item that was so successful for Vandy against athletically superior opponents last, se last season was the screen game. Mm -hmm. We haven't seen the screen game tonight. No, the, really the one time they tried to do it with uh, Keyshawn Vaughn, he got taken to the ground there. So that's interesting, though. You know, Andy Ludwig, the ops quarter last year, was very creative with his screen game. And, and that was their advantage a lot of times. Shifts, motions, unbalanced, getting the screens in creative ways. I haven't quite seen that with Jerry Godowski tonight. Ludwig returned to Utah. He was the OC there. In the past with so many of their great teams. A squibber scooped up by James Cook. And Cook gets taken down and then some extra swings from both sides, including Walter Grant of Georgia. And so far, the favorite way out in front in this match. Third-ranked Georgia up 21 to 6. Let's get to the studio. Matt Berry with Joey and Jesse.
Chants and whistles fill the air. Fans cheering. Fight songs. Pads crashing. There's no doubt. Touchdown. Football is back. Welcome back to ESPN College Football Primetime, presented by Hampton by Hilton. George has taken over this town. They've taken over this stadium. It not take long to take over the game. The third-ranked team in the country with a 21-6 lead as we get ready to start the second half. Tom Hart alongside Jordan Rogers. I guess you could say this is exactly who we expected from Georgia. Yeah, I mean, Georgia has dominated on the line of scrimmage on the offensive side ball. 146 rushing yards. That's more than Vandy has total on offense. And for Vanderbilt, the big three, yeah, Widely been quiet. I mean, Vaughn's had some success, but Pinckney and Kalijah Lipscomb, just four receptions, 16 total yards between the two. And he's got to find a way to get something going on offense because right now it's all Georgia. Eric Mason had a decision to make when it came to quarterback throughout fall camp. He chose Riley Neal, and the curiosity is if he will choose to make a change in the second half. Kickoff will go out of the back of the end zone. We go down to Cole, who talked with Coach Mason. What did he tell you about the quarterback situation? Tom said there will be no quarterback change for the Vanderbilt Commodores in the second half, but did say we need to take some shots down the field. We've allowed the Georgia defense to get too comfortable, so expect a few wrinkles in the second half. On the other side of the football, Derek Mason not necessarily pleased. said we have to stop the run. I asked, how do you do that? He said, we're going to add defenders to the box and look for us to maybe move a little bit more up front. Vandy did not throw a pass more than five yards downfield. At least Riley Neal didn't. And George is averaging 8.1 yards per carry. So those two elements both pointed in George's direction. Bulldogs push five on the line. Neal on the bootleg. A little bit behind his receiver and incomplete to Kalijah Lipscomb. Eric Stokes had the coverage, a lot expected out of the Georgia defensive back as he makes this his fourth career start. They're trying to replace the Thorpe Award winner, DeAndre Baker, who was a first-team All-American and a first-rounder. And Stokes is a guy who can lock receivers down. Yeah, he's their best cover guy. Nine pass breakups last year. Kalijah had a step on him there. Riley Neal just completely missed that one. Came out of his hand all funky. Stokes only allowed completions on 33% of the passes that came his way last year. Georgia loaded the box. Vandy still ran. And Keyshawn Vaughn showing power to pick up a Vanderbilt first down. I get a little taste of why he led the SEC, averaging 5.2 yards after contact last year. He's tough to bring down. I mean, he, he's not huge from a stature perspective. But he is built like a brick house, and if you try to arm tackle him, you're not going to bring him down. Does a great job of getting low center gravity there and just shaking a few tacklers. They fine-tuned the off-season conditioning program for the guys that they think could make it to the next, next level, including Keyshawn Vaughn, and it has paid off in a big way. Neal unloads, sideline shot. Way too much, and the coverage came from Eric Stokes. I think folks are going to learn early. Tough to go his direction. That great coverage on the outside. Just pushing the receiver nearly out of bounds. I mean, that one never had a shot. Riley Neal threw that one because he was under pressure, but they're trying. I mean, Mason said we got to take more shots. That's one thing they didn't do in the first half. We saw Riley Neal get outside the pocket, try to push it downfield, and there again trying to take a shot, but some point you got to complete them. Another wild snap. Vaughn looking for a hole. And he won't find it. Tyler Clark able to take him down. Clark was banged up last year. Had a broken finger. Couldn't use his hand at all. Was very limited. And that led to a down year after a great year the season prior. It'll get loud. Folks in red No, they got a big opportunity with a third and eight.
Pressure coming from the safety spot. And a pass sails high. That time the coverage came from Tyson Campbell. And a really good job on the outside by junior college transfer Jermaine Johnson. We've been saying Georgia's got to find a guy that can rush the passer and that time gets around the right tackle, gets a little pressure on Riley Neal, and that's why that ball sailed. Jermaine Johnson had terrible grades coming out of Eden Prairie High School in Minnesota, ended up at last chance U, and now taking advantage of his opportunity with the dogs. This will be the third punt of the night for Harrison Smith. A low one, but it takes a Vandy hop. It's going to carry down the sideline, and we'll see where they end up marking it. Jake Fromm's going to have a long field as they take it at the 12 after a 50-yard punt from Harrison Smith. Mets Philly Sunday Night Baseball. Here we go. Peter, I'm expecting a home run. Let's go Mets. He's a Florida boy. I'm a little partial. Come on Mets. Yeah, that's our guy Tim Tebow here with SEC Nation today. And he's right. Sunday Night Baseball's in Philly for the series finale between former Gator Pete Alonso set the Mets record for home runs this season. Sitting on 42 and he's driven in 101. Take on Bryce Harper and the Phillies, both in the thick of the NL wild card chase. Our coverage begins at 7 Eastern on ESPN and the ESPN app right after our U.S. Open tennis coverage. Mets doubled up on the Phillies 6-3 this afternoon at Citizens Bank Park. Jake Fromm, pretty good. Just being Jake. 8 of 12 in this one. And Herring to the outside. Jake Fromm and his Georgia offense put up incredible second down numbers last season. And we talked with the Georgia coaches and coordinator James Coley about it. And it's plays like that that make managing the game even easier for Jake Fromm because you can do anything now on second down. Yeah, if you saw the hand signal, he shook it off. So they had two plays called, probably a pass play. He liked what he saw in the box. He shook it off. You run into a friendly box. You get eight yards. It makes second down pretty easy. They were only second in the country to Oklahoma last year in yards gained on second down. Swift gets bottled up here. My theory goes out the window. Oh, but they get a flag. But if you think about it, the better you are on first down, the more second, medium, second shorts you get into, the more you can throw or run. The defense has to be balanced. It's a dangerous position to be in if you're playing defense against Jake Fromm and this Georgia offense as good as they are on first. They led the country in yards per rush on second down. Seven and a half yards per run. Go block in the back, number 87 on the offense. Ten-yard penalty from the end of the run. That's going to go against Three Tyler Simmons, a block down. in the back. And I'll have another crack at second down. Eighty-seven white, right in the middle of your screen. Yeah. Oh, what do you mean? It was. He just got a break down there. I mean, that defender was so far inside. Let him go that way. Just sit there and wait. Landers speed on the outside, bottom of your screen, second and 12. Fromm gives it up. Swift on the run. And a great sign for Georgia, not only a 37-yard run, but he was running behind Matt Landers, blocking on the edge. Alan George finally ran him out. Matt Landers in big left tackle, Andrew Thomas, 6'5", 320. Watch 71, block down, then get outside. Look at the big boy running, getting his hands on it. He doesn't stop. Look at him, he's still running. I love to see the effort out of an offensive lineman like that. As big as these Georgia guys are, it's amazing how well they move, Tom. Isaiah Wilson was chugging down the field. Andrew Thomas was moving. Asked about the offensive line play, Andrew Thomas said, every year we want to win the Joe Moore Award. That goes to the best offensive line in college football. Here's DeAndre Swift, another major hole. And Swift making Vandy pay over the top of Tate Daly, a pickup of 15. On the left side of that offensive line is the strength, guys. I had Andrew Thomas as tackle number one in the SEC heading into this season. Solomon Kinley, the left guard, who for some reason nobody talks about, has 
guard number one in the SEC heading into this season. So you've got the SEC, according to my opinion, which I know a lot of times doesn't mean a whole lot, the best left tackle in the SEC and the best guard in the SEC lined up next to each other on every play for the Bulldogs. Uh, nobody studies more offensive line play than Cole Kubelik. Zamir White is in the game. Fourth different running back. Former five-star. They play action to him and go to the tight end. And we got a flag on the play. Before I hear from the ref, Cole, tell me, who else has a great offensive line in college football? Well, I tell you, I, you have to like Wisconsin after what they did to South Florida. That group is elite. Oregon is going up against Auburn right now. That, to me, second best offensive line in Holding college football. Number 66 on the offense. Ten-yard penalty from the previous spot. Solomon Kinley gets flagged. You also have Clemson. It's not like Clemson doesn't have an embarrassment of riches everywhere else. How good is their old line? Well, they lost a four-year starter at left tackle. Mitch Hyatt didn't get drafted, but they have two NFL guards heading into this season. I actually think the Clemson offensive line will be more physical than they have been the past few seasons under Dabo Sweeney. That's why I have them number three in my ring. Two from the Big Ten. Great read in the Athletic a couple weeks ago on how Iowa and Wisconsin are both so good, yet they do it differently. Crazy thing about Iowa, they got one starter coming back, and I still think they're that good. Vandy just ran a 12th player onto the field. Cole, did I see Army as an honor honorable mention? Defense, you did. Let's go, baby. They play a nasty brand of football, Jordan. And obviously, listen, you, we're not going to take Army's offensive line and say, hey, would you throw them uh, right, on Georgia's right. offense and how would they perform or how would they play if they ran Vandy's offense? It, it's not going to work that way. But for what they're asked to do, which sometimes is how you have to watch football, that group does it as well as anybody else attempting to run the triple option. They do it in a little bit different way, a little more nasty, a little bit more fitness. I'm a big fan of that group. They'll go to the big house next week and take on Michigan. Remember, Army almost took down Oklahoma with long drives last year. Right now, Michigan with a two-touchdown lead on Middle Tennessee State. Here's Zamir White. It's his first carry. Redshirt freshman from Laurenburg, North Carolina. They love him, and he'll get an ovation from the Georgia faithful. He has fought his way onto the field through two torn ACLs. He was the best recruit in all of college football coming out of Scotland High School. And he is part of a backfield that's as loaded as Toddy's Tavern on a Friday night. I mean, they... I wouldn't got, know that one. No. Well, the deck? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> They're going to run it on an end around. Here's Tyler Simmons. And Simmons is able to pick up a yard. It'll be really interesting to see what Kirby Smart does with DeAndre Swift, Brian Harry, and Zamir White, James Cook over the course of this season. Well, we've kind of seen already, if he's tipping his hand, there's going to be a nice, healthy rotation. We've seen Cook get involved in the pass game. Obviously, that's a strong suit of DeAndre Swift as well. But they're... That's a good problem to have. You can roll guys in, keep your running backs fresh and explosive, and you can trust every guy four deep that you put in. And we saw it with Georgia running backs in recent history. Guys nowadays want to be fresh going to the next level. Third down 11. Here's Swift. He's the freshest. And that's going to set up fourth down after an eight-yard run. Who might think about this one? Just on the edge of a comfortable field goal range, but it does look like that's where they're going to go. Rodrigo Blankenship set the Rose Bowl record for the longest field goal in the granddaddy's history with a 55-yarder. This was be from 50. Guess when you got that guy, even 50, you feel pretty comfortable with. Got the leg, oh, and he fillets it. That was good from 60. What a weapon. Questions continue with Alabama's kicker. There's no question about Rodrigo Blankenship. From way downtown. ESPN College Football, brought to you by Exxon and Mobile's new Synergy Supreme Plus, their best fuel ever, and Corona Premier, 
Lower carbs, lower calories, higher expectations. Enjoy the view. We welcome you back to Nashville's West End. Tom Hart, Jordan Rogers, Cole Kubelik, our fantastic ESPN crew tonight. They put in a lot of work this week. Just in College Station Thursday night for AM's opener. And a quick jaunt to the Music City for this one. No return. Sports Center tonight after Fresno State USC with SVP, who will have the season debut of Tua in the Tide, and which teams impress him the most in week one. Plus, Coco Golf, Naomi Osaki highlights and reactions. It's Sports Center with SVP after college football on ESPN and the ESPN app. What do you think we're going to learn from Tua and the Tide going inside the Alabama program? Um, just what we thought, that they are all business all the time. Sprinkle down with maybe a little personality if yeah. Saban lets him. He's comfortable. <laughs> he is very comfortable in his skin. Riley Neal finds Kalijah Lipscomb. Eric Stokes brings him down immediately. It's a gain of three. There was a little miscommunication on that route right there. Kalijah broke that route off at about two yards. So Riley Neal had a little play action there and then took a drop. So he's about three and a half yards deep there. That ball should have been out. Riley Neal was taking a drop, so miscommunication on how deep Riley really wanted that route to be. 12 completions have only brought him 66 yards. Movement again on Ball the Vandio start. line. Number 72 on the offense. Five It'll yard be the ninth flag. Second down. Cole, if you were... Playing offensive line against this Georgia front, how would you prepare? I'd get in the weight room and I'd eat. <laughs> That'd be two things. Number one, I'd get ready to go low a lot because you'd have to cut a lot of these guys to get them down and hopefully get them tired. But I, you got to work your technique and fundamentals. It's the only way. Devontae White and Jordan Davis, both 300 pounders, anchor that line as of now. And Keyshawn Vaughn finds two. Wyatt, the junior from Decatur, where it's greater, brings him down. Going back to what Jordan mentioned about that movement on the Georgia defense earlier in the broadcast, we hadn't seen it a ton here in the second half. Earlier in the game, we did. It doesn't just cause confusion after the snap. From an assignment perspective there, you saw that essentially cause that offsides. A lot of guys get in their stance, you get ready to go. You see a defensive lineman movement, and you flinch a little bit. Georgia gets a flag off of it. Multiple benefits from moving your front around. Georgia loaded up one side. They dropped eight, and that one's incomplete. Cole, you're down there. How loud is it when Vanderbilt's facing a third down? It's loud. When it's a big one, it gets loud. And, and I don't, I, from where I'm standing, I don't really think that they're able to communicate at the line of scrimmage. And I know they're having to go silent count because you can see that the way they're directing things at the line of scrimmage and they're going with the clap. So it's loud. We did a game here with Florida a couple of years ago, and I saw Vanderbilt go silent count when they were on this end, the opposite end they're on now. But it's, it's been loud a couple of times where I know it's affected the snap count. Seems like 75% of this crowd or more is pulling for the dogs. Tyler Simmons has an opportunity here. Simmons bends it outside. A stiff arm will take him past midfield, and he ran down the apron. And they will mark him out at the 41. 47-yard punt. 31 taken back on the return for Simmons. Welcome back to the SEC on ESPN. Third-ranked Georgia in control and the offense back on the field. Let's take a look at tonight's PlayStation Player Impact rating. DeAndre Swift's rating from 2018. 96 out of 100. The Philly native was a thousand yard rusher. He averaged six and a half yards per carry. That just tells me every time he's on the field, something positive happens. Whether he's catching the football, whether he's getting vertical in the run game, he's a special player. And I got to think that his Heisman campaign is going to continue as Georgia has success and they do it based around running the football. Averaging 11 yards per carry. And here he goes again. Ran into his uncle at the team hotel the other day. He said, man, did you all see what Travis Etienne did last night? Georgia Tech's killing me. He's killing me because now my nephew's got a tougher task to try to grab the Heisman. Isn't that funny? 
It's a couple other running backs. I mean, uh, Jonathan Taylor, big day, running back at Wisconsin. But Swift is right in that conversation. And this offense wants to run the football to have success. They do have three other guys that can do it just as well. So really the story is going to be, does he get enough touches to put up those type of numbers? Georgia's run for 219 yards already tonight. And they're running behind that big old line, and they're running with Brian Harrion. And Cole, I know you've been impressed by what Ben Cleveland has done. That's a unique dude. Oh, yeah. Ben Cleveland, freak show, Stevens County, Georgia. Kirby Smart told me when he was recruiting him, Tom, he showed up at his house and he was eating squirrel on a stick. He said, I knew right then and there, that's a dude. We got to have him on our offensive line. So I figured if I'm going to watch him play, I might as well eat squirrel on a stick, too. Well, yeah, I mean, the only other choice is Come on, Squirrel really? Stew. I don't want to do this. What do you got down there, Western Gray? Yeah, mine's not Summer Squirrel, though, because I've been told stay away from squirrels in the summer. How do you season this thing? Here's Harry in for a couple. Let me guess. It tastes you like chicken. It. No, you freeze it. You get it in the winter or the fall, and you freeze it. You really? You want? I mean, it's he just bad. housed that. He housed it. It's I'm looking really at this thing. Bad. I'm going to let you if I can, this If I can get Ben Cleveland's waistline, I'll eat squirrel every day. <laughs> I'm not even playing. I don't know what to do with the tail yet, well, but I'm just saying. You're not going to make Miss Manners column this week, that's for sure. I apologize for that. Ben Cleveland committed to head coach Mark Rick, coming back from an injury against Missouri, fractured his fibula in the second half. Part of a versatile O-line and Herring again. I picked, I went up to uh, Upper Midwest, I picked out some black squirrel for you. They're usually better in the winter, they can hold the heat better with the black fur. You sure you don't just want two of them? No, I'm good. Yeah, this chicken, just like chicken. It's just, a, just like chicken. <laughs> would be the biggest squirrel I've ever seen if this was really squirrel on a stick. <laughs> Weird, it tastes just like chicken. Huh. Huh. Back to football, Georgia, one of three on third downs. They've only faced third down three times tonight. From with a third and one. Has time and two receivers in the same spot. Demetrius Robertson was the closest to the throw. And trying to get wheel routes on both sides of the field. Top of your screen, DeAndre Swift was covered on a wheel route, so Fromm came down here to the bottom looking for Demetrius Robinson, but not enough space between this curl route on the outside by George Pickens. The young true freshman, he's got to know, if anything, leave that curl inside because you got a wheel route trying to get on the outside of you. You can't be standing in the same spot with two guys. Fourth and a long one. They converted 8 of 13 on fourth down last year. Fromm's got DeAndre Swift. Bad exchange on the snap. Swift stumbles behind the line and he gets taken down by Deo Odangbo. That might be the first time tonight Vandy has penetrated the backfield there, gotten vertical upfield. That play was designed to go in the A-gap, but Swift had absolutely nowhere to go. The penetration actually came out of the B-gap between yeah. the guard and tackle, but it came back behind the center, Jordan. That's what forced that big cutback. That's a first play that's lost yards for Georgia tonight. It's a big stop for Vandy. Still don't believe they've completed a ball beyond five yards. Am I wrong? No, you're right. I don't think so. Vandy scored on each of their last two possessions in the second quarter with a couple of field goals. And they will get nothing on that run by Keyshawn Vaughn because Jordan Davis, the sophomore from Charlotte, found his way into the backfield. It's a loss of four. Well, that's a guy George is really excited about. If Jordan Davis can get rolling from that nose guard spot, interior guard to guard, that really opens up things for a very inexperienced yet talented linebacker crew behind him. They need a dominant force in between the guards. And Jordan Davis, he's got the size, he's got the athleticism. He just hasn't quite put it all together yet. Second and long for Riley Neal. Batted away. That time, another big found his way into the backfield. Justin Young. He's only 275 pounds. 
That's the eat game off the left side, Jordan. In comes in first, tackle goes around. They've just been playing games all day. Jordan Davis gets there a little late. Justin Young just too quick. Squeaks right in between there. And the athletic body type gets his hands up. This is this is not a good situation for Vandy to be in. I imagine a draw, a screen, something safe. Silent count at home. Neal out of the backfield to Jamari Wakefield. And Wakefield is able to find 10. Monty Rice with the stop. Oh, and Vandy is thinking about this. Why would you? I, I would not. Fourth and what, four? Fourth and four, you've shown very little semblance of a run game. I mean, this is, yeah, this is the smart move. Punt this football because if you don't get those four yards, you're pretty much handed Georgia points. Tyler Simmons back for Georgia. Had a solid return last time. This is a boomer of a kick by Harrison Smith. Simmons. After a 53-yard punt, a 17-yard return. And Sean Jenkins with the stop. Jake Fromm and the Georgia Bulldogs will be back on offense when we return to Nashville. Yeah, Matt, it is not easy for USC to start the season and then, and then what if they don't have success in the first five? They took a look at this play to see Tyler Simmons' knee, and it was down at the outset of that punt return. So they're going to bring it back, it looks like. To further review, the receiver's knee was down at the 21-yard line. The announcement it will be ball, down first at, and at the 21-yard 21 line. Please reset the game clock for one minute, 45 Assess seconds. for me tonight, Jake Fromm's game. I don't think he's had to do a ton. And I'll tell you what, if you're watching this, and that guy's he's, he's played good. What you, you haven't seen is what he's done pre-snap. The amount of snaps, it's, it's got to be at least 50-50 that he's doing something. Flipping the play, changing the play. A lot of times you'll see him come out and shake something off. If they had one play called, he's shaking it off to a run or alerting to a run when Vandy doesn't put enough guys in the box. So what he's done for this run game, you can't measure on a stat line. But that's had the biggest impact so far tonight. This is James Cook, and Cook takes it to the right side for four. Kenny Abear the stop. And they're going to take big right tackle Isaiah Wilson out of the game. Got a little shake it up. Kate Mays, sophomore from Knoxville, will replace him. Yeah, Sam Pittman, the Georgia offensive line coach, told me before the game, Cade Mays is going to kind of be their Swiss Army knife, their utility player, as far as a backup is concerned along that offensive line. He can even back up center, and obviously both guards. Now we'll see him playing some tackle as well. Mays a legacy. His dad, Kevin, captain of the 94 team. Second and six. Zamir White. Dog fans love him. And for good reason, ball punched out from behind. It'll get out of bounds and stay with Georgia. I was at Georgia practice last week watching Zamir Wright. You know the blasters that all the running backs run through? Yeah. Zamir White almost pushed the sled down the field. That's not how it's supposed to work. This is a 28-yard run. He is shifty and he is strong and explosive, but just can't get over this offensive line. Guard to guard, they are creating so much movement. Please start the clock on my side. In the middle of this football field, these Georgia backs are making one cut, getting vertical, and they had a lot of green, green grass to play with. The thing I like most about what I've seen from this Georgia offensive line tonight, Jordan, they're hanging with their double teams. There is no rush to leave the player next to you to go up to a linebacker or go up to a safety. They are securing the first level of that Vanderbilt defense first, and that's always going to get you yards. See if they go back to Zamir White. They do. They call him Zeus. And we got a flag at the tail end of that one. Zamir White stands six feet even, 215 pounds. 
And it's a miracle in many ways he's even here. He spent the first 100 days of his life holding in neonatal intensive on the care. Offense. Ten yard penalty, replay, first down. He wages one pound six months into the term of his mom's pregnancy. He got pregnant when she was 14. He was born with a cleft lip, a cleft palate, two cysts on the umbilical cord. He, would toll, he was told he would reach a height of 5'2 and a weight of 120 pounds. He has exceeded the doctor's expectations, and through his high school career, he exceeded everyone's expectations. And now can he bounce back from multiple torn ACLs? DeAndre Swift returns to the field. Dale Odangbo brings him down after a seven-yard gain. Vandy hanging in there. Georgia has been in control, but this one closer than That's the experts the thought. Quarter. It's 24 to 6 as we head to the fourth. Welcome back to the SEC on ESPN. Glory travels. Vanderbilt Stadium full of Bulldog fans, and they're running their own traditions on the road. There are no hedges here, but you would not know. Tell you what, those bars down on Broadway, are, uh, they're going to be packed with a sea of red tonight. <laughs> Tootsies, the FGL house. <laughs> I mean, every honky-tonk down there is going to be absolutely slammed with Georgia fans. And it looks like they'll have something to celebrate. Second of 13. They go empty backfield with Cook split out wide from over the middle late. Pass was tipped. Well, about half the SEC schools decided that they would take advantage of a new rule and sell alcohol in their stadiums. I have a feeling that beer sales went swimmingly for Vandy tonight. You kidding me? May have endowed a couple more scholarships with what they pulled in. This is just a pregame for Georgia. They're going to have some fun tonight in Nashville if this one keeps riding out the way it has been. Three man rush. Over the middle to Karis Jackson and a big stop by Deshaun Jerkins. And there's a Vanderbilt team missing some key players due to injuries. The offensive line totally retooled. And safety Frank Coppett is out, replaced by Jerkins, who has 12 tackles tonight. Twelve tackles in his debut. It's one of those names that the Vandy coaches just kept raving about. The camp he had, he's a ball hawk, he's a hitter. You mentioned plays with his hair on fire. I mean, he's the type of energy and player Vandy really needs in the secondary to make plays just like that. 43-yard punt. Take a look at a chance to win the SEC East, according to ESPN.com FPI. Uh, numbers tilted heavily in George's favor. They haven't lost a game in the division in two years. Missouri, by the way, trailing big on the road at Wyoming tonight. Tennessee lost at home. Not a good showing for the SEC East. South tonight. Carolina lost in Charlotte to Mac Brown's squad. How about Mac Brown? There's a way to start, huh? Yeah. We now have five active coaches who have won a national championship thanks to Mac Brown returning to the game. And thanks to Les Miles coming back in. Kansas pulled one off at the end today in Les Miles' first game as their head coach. But then again, Charlie Weiss won his first game at Kansas, too. Andy pushing the tempo a little bit here. On second and seven, Vaughn hesitates and had nowhere to go. Devontae Wyatt brought him down. You know, I think there was a lot of times last year that we watched this Vanderbilt offense under Andy Ludwig, and, and you were just like, oh, where's the explosiveness, right? I mean, at times, Kyle Shermer would push it downfield, but the shifts and the motions every play, Vandy hasn't done much. I mean, they're lining up three, four wide, one back, and going zone. You can't line up like that against this Georgia team and expect to win. And now here on third and long, 
These Georgia ends are going to pin their ears back and come after you. His line can't hear him. Neal. Sacked! Jumped inside the five that brought the house, and the house came down on him. Aziz Ojolari. Second sack of the night for the dogs. Oza Ojolari does a great job off the edge here. Working on Cole Clemens, the left tackle. And again, in third and long, these defensive ends can pin their ears back. Look at this. Great with his hands. Swipes the left tackle's hands out of the way. Gets to the quarterback. Gets a little help out from Channing Tindall as well. Yeah, Tindall wasn't touched. Wouldn't matter yeah. if he won that no. battle over the left side. Yeah. Punting from the back of the end zone is Harrison Smith. Great hang time and Tyler Simmons from the logo. Tyler Simmons to the corner. Flag down back at the 44. And this one likely coming back. 45 yard punt, 24 on the return as it stands. That poor visor. That bill's got to be broken in there. Mm -hmm. Creased. Head ball coach would throw him. Kirby strangles him. During the return, the big old block in the back, number 11 on the receiving team. 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down, Georgia. Time so out. that'll back him up. Georgia back on offense, up 18. Let's take a look at our Corona premier moment. And there have been a lot of them for Georgia tonight. The success centers on the run game. Been a heavy dose of the ground to attack this offensive line, blowing holes. But Brian Harrion and DeAndre Swift have been navigating the waters here against Vanderbilt with ease. I mean, look at that. 279 total yards on the ground. And Vandy. Just 162 total yards. Swift averaging nine and a half yards a carry. Those guys have been running through Vandy like those motorized scooters down on Lower Broadway. This is shot territory. I'd be careful if I was Vandy. Georgia lines up to take one. Instead, it's a check down to Brian Harrion, and Harrion stays on his feet. Gain of four. Cole, what he got? Kenny Abair, outside linebacker for the Vanderbilt Commodores, went to the locker room, was holding his wrist, has not come back out of the locker room. A guy that Jason Tarver told us he wants to try to line up everywhere to bring pressure from different locations. Not out there on this drive for the Commodores. Great job by Jake Fromm on that last play. They wanted to take a shot deep post, but it wasn't there. He had pressure. Check it down. It's one of the things new offensive coordinator James Cole, who was the quarterback coach last year, said, hey, a called shot doesn't mean a shot taken. Just because I call it doesn't mean if, if it's not there, just check it down. Live to play another play. They give it on the end around. Demetrius Robinson. Robinson breaks free and will take it down to the 35. I think the other thing with Jake Fromm when it comes to deep balls is because he doesn't have the cannon of an arm like some first-round NFL prospects, the idea is you've got to wait for the perfect scenarios to take that shot. Totally. And sometimes that can get frustrating. So when it's called, you really want to hit that one. But yeah, Jake Fromm doesn't have the elite arm that you know, some of the headliners will have. The Justin Herberts, KJ Costello over at Stanford. There's some big arms that people talk about in this 2020 draft class. But what he doesn't have, he makes up for between the ears. He makes up for being a leader. He's extremely accurate. He anticipates. And his deep ball the biggest improvement from last year to now. From down the left sideline, what a grab, a little bit behind Jackson, and he stays on into the five, but loss of football. Live ball, and Vandy will have a chance to take it away from Georgia. 30-yard pass play, and then 13 on the fumble return. Great play design, little throwback. Jackson just. That ball is definitely out. Forced out by Afamui. 24 6, Georgia.
ESPN College Football is presented by Hampton by Hilton. College football stays here. Book now at Hampton.com and in part by Chex Mix. Score the winning mix. The winning mix has been there for Georgia tonight. Their offense has run to the tune of eight and a half yards of play. The defense hasn't given Vanderbilt any breathing room. They flush the quarterback again. Incomplete with coverage on the back end by Richard LeCount. Problem is when you run a game to one side, there's a penetrator and a loop man. The penetrator was handled, but did get a little bit of a push. Riley Neal leaves to the right where the loop defender was coming right back around into his face. And just really nowhere to go, Jordan. 13 and 21 for 76 yards for Neal. Grad transfer from Ball State. Looked like they gave him time then, but coverage was too good. And Neal will flick it out of bounds. Let's flick it back to the studio with Matt Berry. for Vanderbilt. Georgia brings three and Neal misses for C.J. Bowler. Bowler was there, just missed inside and on the previous play. They're trying to get the ball to Pinckney. Riley Neal comes off that, doesn't get to a second read that was wide open. I mean, right now I just seen a quarterback that is a little inaccurate. Eyes aren't going to the right spot. Yeah, he's been under some pressure, but just not playing like a guy that's thrown for 7,000 yards and 32 starts. Doesn't look comfortable. Has not all night. Tyler Simmons has been on the verge of breaking a couple punt returns here. Takes this one at the 39. Incredible speed on the punt return for Simmons. And that'll send us to a break. Another tackle for Deshaun Jerkins. 44-yard punt, 23 on the return. The college football playoff lives on ESPN. Stewart, Pistol Pete of the Oyster Nile, True South, New Orleans. New tradition of the True South. How about Nashville becoming this incredible sports town? This is the NFL draft this past spring. 600,000 people over three days. Look at Lower Broadway. This was insane. Why have the NFL draft anywhere else? I mean, the bar was set so hot. Look at this. Saw the coverage on ABC and ESPN. What a scene it was. One thing you didn't see on the coverage is Fromm rolls out, and he's able to find his tight end, Tennessee transfer Eli Wolf. First down, Georgia. Cole Kublik was here doing some radio coverage for the NFL draft. He couldn't get a car ride home to the West End, so Cole rode a motorized scooter all the way from Lower Broadway back here towards the Nashville campus. How'd that work out for you, big fella? It was fine. It was a little scary. It uh, cost me about $3.75, so it was a heck of a bargain. <laughs> but a great uh, deal. You know, had to get actually out on the road one or two times due to some construction, but we survived. That poor scooter. Man, how's your feet fit on that? <laughs> Rob hands it off swift. Change of direction. Took a shot right towards the line. The Georgia fans wanted a hanky. D.C. Williams. Jordan, I offered Tom to relive it today. 
I said, hey, we got some time during the day. Let's go hop on a scooter. Let's go check it out. I All went, around town, he said, not doing it. Nope. Yeah, I wouldn't do it because too many people in this town drive like you do. From out to his tight end, Charlie Warner. I think, Jordan, that we're going to see Jake Fromm over the course of the season utilize guys like Warner and Wolf a ton, even though he hasn't had to tonight. I mean, a tight end can be your best friend as a quarterback at times. And the, the receiver position was a huge question mark coming into tonight. They have a ton of talent. And one thing I've noticed, there's not one guy right now. Jake Fromm is distributing the ball evenly across the board. I think there's four or five guys at receiver, and two or three guys at tight end that can really contribute here catching the ball for Fromm. Third and short, and a timeout taken timeout. by Vandy. Vanderbilt, their first. We'll put our order in for some hot chicken. Cole can go find it with the scooter, 24-6. County High School's Jake Fromm endeared himself early to Georgia fans. This dude wins games and he's on his way to winning another. And not gaudy numbers for Fromm tonight, but when the next defensive coordinator and the rest of them this season flip on the film and watch what he does before the snap, how accurate he is, he's going to keep a lot of guys up at night because you just cannot defend this guy any way you slice it. When Fromm was a youngster, he's a big Georgia fan. He and his grandpa Walked into a sporting goods store in Macon, Georgia, not far from his hometown of Warner Robins. They found a Herschel Walker helmet. Jake told his grandpa, I got to have that helmet. I got to have the helmet. $500 later, he got the helmet. It sits in Jake Fromm's room today. And for a guy who once committed to Alabama, it seemed destiny would bring him back to Athens in the classic city. Third down one. Harrion bottled up and can't quite strain to the line. No gain. Drew Birchmeyer out of Midlothian, Virginia, was able to shove him back. You go for it here, right? Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Good job being stout up here. Birchmeyer, I mean, he was sniffing kneecaps there. Wow. I might have just gone for this. I mean, Vandy hasn't shown they can do anything on offense. Give Georgia offensive line two tries to get one yard. I got to think they're getting it. But well, you got to share the ball with all those running backs and some talented wide right receivers and tight ends. You also have to share it with Rodrigo Blankenship. 37 yard attempt here. And of course, he bangs it through. Well, Monday night, it's the only game of the night. Brian Kelly in ninth ranked Notre Dame. Take on Louisville. It's Scott Satterfield's debut for the Cardinals, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific from Cardinal Stadium on ESPN and the ESPN app. A wild opening weekend of college football, I guess, kind of what we expected, except for the struggles in the SEC East. Tennessee lost a tough one at home today. Really to surprised. State. Tennessee, South Carolina, Missouri. Those are teams that we were all kind of talking about. Can they push? The Floridas, the Georgias, can they take that next step in the well, you, first start? You throw Florida out there like it's assumed based on how they played the fourth quarter against Miami a week ago. You still believe that Florida is the second best? I think there's clear separation between the other teams. I think we learned that even more so after today. I just thought South Carolina was going to be more ready than they showed, and Tennessee as well with the recruiting that they did with Jared Garantano getting Jim Chaney from Georgia. I was excited about that offense, but week one, to fix for these teams. Good thing it's early. Sometimes those things can turn around, but do you believe the adage that you make more progress between game one and game two than Absolutely. any other time in the season? Absolutely. You learn a lot about guys that really haven't got snaps. I mean, a lot of young players playing for every SEC team. Jamari Wakefield brings it out for Vandy, carries the pile to the 30. Can we talk about what everyone's really thinking? When we go on camera, how big are these Mike? <laughs> What are these called? <laughs> these are windscreens. Windscreens. How big are these things? I can't even. Yes, TV land. I have a mouth. It's somewhere behind this windscreen. Twitter's blowing up. Are they? Are they? At now? least to me. Uh, I wouldn't know. <laughs> I 
didn't get in the way of eating squirrel on a stick earlier tonight. God, what are we doing? <laughs> the things an offensive lineman will talk you into. Uh-huh. Two yards on the right side. I, Cole told me earlier that that was going to be his birthday present to you. Oh, great. Chick, uh, squirrel on a stick or, or chicken on a stick, depending on what locale you have. Yeah. By the way, there was some stress involved with Kirby Smart and Georgia getting to the stadium today. The normal route that the bus has come, apparently, for some reason, wasn't available. The shame of it is the parents and the fans were lined up for dog walk in the northwest corner of the stadium. But the bus couldn't get that far. So finally, when they got stuck in traffic and stopped, Kirby said, forget it. We're getting off here. And they walked two and a half blocks from the opposite direction to get to the stadium. Keyshawn Vaughn. Finally gets taken down. Let's take it to Matt Berry. All right, thank you so much. Pass completed. To the edge, and it'll be a yard short of the first down. Interesting late summer chatter about SC and what could be happening there. They open with Fresno, then Stanford, then BYU, then Utah, then Washington, then Notre Dame. The question isn't just would there be a coaching vacancy there, but Pat Forty had an article a couple weeks ago that they could have an AD vacancy there. And if they do, would Urban Meyer leave the TV studio to take the job at USC? That's interesting. And is that good for college football to have Urban Meyer at USC? I think, no matter what you think of Urban Meyer, I think it's great for college football to spread the power out a little bit. Absolutely. I mean, the Pac-12, like it or not, I'm a California boy. I mean, the TV schedule, they don't get as much national eyeballs. And so a lot of times some players in that conference is out of the normal conversations, whether it's merited or not. Well, they don't get eyeballs because right now they don't get talent. The recruiting no, totally. is down across the yes. board. and. You hire a guy like Urban Meyer, that changes almost overnight. Oh, I agree. And, and USC is one of those storied programs that they have the history. Yeah, they haven't been good as of recent past. But a guy like that could bring a lot of momentum to a program. JT Daniels is a heck of a quarterback. Young last year, made some mistakes. I think he's got a, a bright future. Neal uh -oh. lost it. It was another high snap. He never got control of it. And it's recovered by Devontae Wyatt. Issues from center Grant Miller in his first start at center in his career. He's been inconsistent with the snaps all night. None to the backstop, but many outside of the strike zone. And that's tough. Anytime you're trying to run zone read or even throw the football, that snap takes the quarterback's eyes away, gets you half a second behind. And really, that, that, that's a read that Riley's thinking, I might, I might pull this, but he's so late to it that as he's starting to pull, he's realizing he doesn't have control of it. Running back's too far ahead. I mean, that timing's just bad when the snap's that bad. Savage, Savage pads. pads are out. <laughs> Zamir White at tailback. Whoa. Hello. Kenny Abear is back in the game. He's got a cast on his right hand now. And he took that billy club right to Zamir White. Zamir White came into this game having not carried the ball since November of 2017. Getting some reps here tonight. And there he goes. Zamir White with a first down run for Georgia. A gain of 14. Torn ACL in his right knee in high school. As a prep player, he scored a touchdown in his first high school carry. He also scored a touchdown in his first Pop Warner carry. He scored a touchdown on one out of every four carries in high school. Is that good? That's pretty good. Then got to Georgia and tore the ACL in his left knee. A sidearm sling to the outside of Lawrence Cajun. 
Former Kane. Gain of four. So Zamir White has been running full go over the course of fall camp. What a weapon he could be. And how much depth is in this Georgia backfield right now? James Cook looked dynamic catching the ball out of the backfield tonight. Brian Harrion is a great one-two punch, getting vertical to spell DeAndre Swift and Zamir White. That's as much talent as anyone. White steps through a would-be tackle, takes it back to the marker again. You were talking about Riley Neal earlier. In his career at Ball State, he threw for 7,000 yards, right? Zamir White, in his high school career, ran for over 7,000 yards. Ooh. Wow. A Bear is hurt again. It was his hand earlier, now reaching for his leg. In the meantime, let's go back to the studio with Matt. Wow. Cole, how did you see that Auburn quarterback race playing out? I thought Bo Nix would get it. You're talking about a guy, if there was ever someone with the DNA to step in and play quarterback as a true freshman, Bo Nix would be that guy. He's been raised by a quarterback in his household every day of his life. He's wearing the same number at the same school that his dad did it and obviously competed at a very high level in high school, whether it's the Elite 11, the Under Armour All-American game, the opening. I thought Bo Nix would win the job because I thought he'd be able to handle more. Neither one of them had a lot of experience. Now, Joey Gatewood gives you a bigger, more physical guy who can hurt you in short yardage situations, like you heard Matt Barry say he just did when he punched it in. I think Bo Nix a little more accurate, probably a guy that just understands the game a little bit more. He's seen more. Joey Gatewood wasn't even the full-time starter in high school, guys. Mm. So I thought Bo Nix would get it, but Joey Gatewood does bring a little bit of a different dimension. Not surprised to see he was going to get reps. Gus Malzahn told me a couple weeks ago both guys would play in that game. Bo Nix, 9 of 23 for a buck 24 touchdown, but two picks tonight as Gus Mazan has taken over play calling duties full time now. Sole driver of the Gus bus. 320 and counting. Still interested parties in this one with Georgia up 21. Yeah, one on one coverage down here with George Pickens, a talented true freshman. Fromm looks his way, gives him a signal. Looking for a highlight reel again. Pickens! Oh. Incomplete. Man. James Coley's oh, eyes man. lit up when I mentioned the Instagram post that showed the incredible catch from George Pickens in practice. Did you guys see that? And then he goes, that's one of like nine or ten every week. Fromm wants to have this one back. I mean, when you got a guy that talented that can go up and grab it 50-50 the way Pickens can, you got to miss that one high. You got to give him a chance for the jump ball. But he saw what I did. I was just a little audible. Looked over, gave Pickens a signal, took a shot. And now second and ten. Fromm going the opposite way. Same goal, but incomplete. A little bit of chatter. Yeah, he's letting him hear it a little bit. D.C. Williams out of Independence Community College with the coverage. You know, Tom, you mentioned the physical capabilities of George Pickens. If you saw his dad at Phillips High School out of Birmingham, Alabama, and the and one dunk show that he put on in every game that he played, it wouldn't be overly surprising that his son, also named George Pickens, was able to do some similar things. This Pickens has a brother who was in the CFL after a career as a defensive back at Arkansas State. Talented family, Demetrius Robinson in motion. Third and ten from floats it. Robinson coming back for it. And that'll set up fourth down with the clock running. And one of the nation's most reliable kickers on to extend the lead. Tell you, tell you what, Vandy, they've played stingy this second half. Georgia's had some opportunities, but hasn't been able to cash in the way they did in the first half. Blankenship didn't miss from inside 30 last year. This is just outside of it at 31. And that means a lot to many. Georgia takes a 24-point lead with 2.13 to go. Kirby's visor is out of the danger zone. 
There's still two minutes left. The visors, <laughs> not out of the woods yet. <laughs> Who's done more damage to visors, Spurrier or Smart? Well, you mentioned that they're different. Spurrier would just chuck his. Kirby just grabs that thing and wants to break it in half. The Smart family's got a new puppy at home. You wouldn't be surprised to know that it has a Georgia connection, a hunting dog that comes from the lineage of a great hunting dog of its own right. The name of that one, Irk Russell, the longtime Georgia defensive coordinator who was so tough he would headbutt his own players until his head bled. They were wearing helmets. Russell wasn't. They don't make them like that anymore. No. <laughs> In that 1980 Georgia team, the last to win a national championship. Tough to fill out a complete report card given tonight's game, but seems like all A's right now for Georgia. Can they replicate this down the road in future games against better opponents? So Vandy will change quarterbacks with 213 left. Deuce Wallace out of Sevier County High School. Same high school as Dolly Parton. He's a scratch golfer. He spent a year away from this program or a semester at least. He was working out with J.P. Aaron Sebia and other guys back in the Knoxville area to try and stay finely tuned. Former Smokey Bear from Sevierville. He last played with four games in relief of Kyle Shermer a couple of seasons ago. That's what I'm talking about. Here's Jamari Wakefield. We met with both Vandy quarterbacks, Neal and Wallace, yesterday, and it seemed like a very friendly competition in that quarterback room. Yeah, it was, and I've been in those competitions at every level, and so that was my question. How's your guys' relationship on and off the field? And seemed great. Uh, a lot of times you can get some animosity. Obviously, everyone's a competitor. They want to play. But good friends on the field. They hang out two or three times a week as well. I wish, I wish we would have seen Deuce a little earlier. He's yep. a talented kid. He's got a strong arm, mobile, knows this offense. I wish maybe two drives ago, eight, nine minutes left, some more significant time. We could have really Personal seen. Personal foul, face mask, number 25 on the defense. 15-yard penalty added to the end of the run. Mitchell Pryor with the carry. Really wanted to see what he could do, running the football, you know, in, in meaningful time. I think this quarterback position still has a lot to be desired. Mm -hmm. They get Purdue next. Purdue let a late lead the slip away the in the their snap. action late last night. Again, Mitchell Pryor. So Vandy gets Purdue next. As far as the Georgia schedule is concerned, home against Murray State and then Arkansas State, and the big one. Third week of September, Notre Dame comes to town. And on the slant, they're able to pick up a first down. So what's interesting is with this early conference game, Georgia will continue its winning streak in the SEC East by knocking off Vandy. And then they can they can just kind of cruise and wait for that big one against Notre Dame. Wide open on the out route. And another Vandy first down. Deuce Wallace looks pretty good throwing the football. He does. He's talented. He's got a good arm. 19 there. Chris Pierce is a big-bodied receiver. Haven't quite seen the production that you maybe want out of that guy, but I think this quarterback competition is going to be ongoing. I honestly do. Mm -hmm. I think there's a good chance next week at Purdue. It's obviously Riley Neal to start the game again, but the leash is much shorter. Riley Neal going back to Indiana. After playing at Ball State, he's a Muncie guy. And incomplete little shove at the end, but no flag from Tyreek Stevenson. I know it's way early, but why not start it now? How would you handicap Georgia and Notre Dame? I mean, again, until I see anybody 
that can neutralize this offensive line. And Notre Dame's not going to have the size that some of the other teams in the SEC will. They're going to be good up front. They absolutely will be. But right now, when you can lean on guys the way Georgia can, and in your back pocket, you still have one of the best quarterbacks in the country, but you, you might not have to use them until you absolutely have to, that's dangerous. Deuce Wallace on the move. Throws on the run and finds the wall. Yeah, Notre Dame will bring good defensive in depth, but they lost Jerry Tillery and two other defensive tackles that were heavy in the rotation a season ago, so the middle of that defense will be very different. I'm intrigued to see that Notre Dame offense, though, because you're not inserting Ian Book a couple weeks into the season, Jordan. It's his deal, so Ryan Kelly can kind of build it around him a little bit more, and I expect to have a few different wrinkles that suit his game a little bit better than last season. Third and ten, Vandy has yet to score a touchdown in this one. On the run. And it falls incomplete. And Deuce Wallace got chased down by Adam Anderson. It's tough as a quarterback when your game is your mobility and the outside linebacker is faster than you. <laughs> it's not fair. No, that is not fair at all. It's really not. A lot of hard seltzer there. 30 to 6, Georgia with the lead. Tamari Wakefield for Vanderbilt being taken off the field on a cart. Not a good sign. Wallace begging for the snap, gets it on fourth down. And incomplete. Vandy will turn it over on downs. Bigger concern is Wakefield for this Vanderbilt team. Second string running back behind Keyshawn Vaughn. Vanderbilt, more than seven touchdown underdogs tonight, would have taken a Herculean effort to knock off the third ranked team in the country. But next week is a very winnable game against Purdue. And for a Vandy team that has been teetering on bowl eligibility over the last few years, that's a that's almost a must-win game for them on the road next it, week. It absolutely is. I mean, when you play at Vanderbilt, and I did, those non-conference games, getting three or four of those at most, I mean, that's how you make bowl games here. When you're outnumbered, at least from a talent perspective, most Saturdays in the SEC, you can play stout, you can play stingy, and Vandy always does. But you got to give yourself a leg up by winning those non-conference games and dominating those like you should. Jake Fromm will take a knee and they'll run the clock out on this one. Georgia with another win against the SEC East. It was a 14-0 lead after the first quarter. And the dogs a little bit quieter offensively in the second half. But still dominating. This will be their 20th win in the last 23 season openers. The Bulldogs in the SEC opener behind Kirby Smart in a dominating run game take a 30-6 victory over Vanderbilt. They average 8.1 yards a carry, 7.5 yards per play. Georgia dominates. So for Cole Kubelik and Jordan Rogers, I'm Tom Hart saying so long from Nashville. Let's get you to Memorial Coliseum, Fresno State, USC. Jason Benetti, all yours.